What is going on, bench warmers? Second half of the season starts now. That was halftime last week. Now we're in the second half of the season. We have a lot to go over from mid-season reviews, player gradings, winter transfer gradings, game week 22 predictions, and to end it all off, fantasy 15. You know, we have to give you your advice between Diego and Gat, the amazing work they put into it, so that way you guys can do well in your leagues. And if you do poorly, we know who to blame. <laughs> disclaimer, disclaimer, <laughs> disclaimer, 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 disclaimer. I'm one of your hosts. My name is Eric. Nico Nick. John A.K. Gat. Uh, Diego Statrol. And Josue Dyer. And once again, our dynamic duo, Crack Producer Team. Crack Producer. Oh, I like that. Plural. Plural. Producers with an S. Up. Come on, baby. It's two of us now. We got over there. Capital P. Come on, Vlad. A.K. Master Vlad. Mm. It's a Master Vlad. What's up? What's up? What's up? Yo, hey, Mar Marco's, Mar Marco's Mar dormido over there. Yo, Marco took a break. As soon as he's like, you got it. He took a break. <laughs> yeah, for real. He took the headset on. He's re you retired now? <laughs> you saw Vlad put the headset on. He just turned around. I'm the audience. I'm the audience. Don't fall asleep like that. Oh. Wow. Chill, yo. The employers could be watching. Chill. You can't be out of him like that. Too much, though. Messed up, bro. Your co-workers watch, sorry? You know? Nah, but they took a picture of me sleeping on a job. They did? Oh, my God. Blackmail, can you cover me next week? I'm going to need that information, that picture. You know, we need that for blackmail purposes. So please, if you're watching this, Send that over. All the way. You hear this? Well, they they even said it on live. live. Blackmail purposes. Uh, like, what is that? It's down below in our description <laughs> Facebook, Instagram. You can, you can reach us in any shape, way, or form. Email. Just get us that picture. It's all down in the description. That'd, make a, crazy, that'd make a crazy meme, man. <laughs> that'd be a good meme at it. That's dire, dire asleep. Got bullied oh, it's, it's I'm like, getting, I got bullied last night. I'm getting bullied right now. It's, it's, like, the, it's like the Shaq meme. You know, the one was Which like, one? I sleep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Trophies. Uh, I sleep. <laughs> last night as well. But we'll get into that, bro. Yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll that's fake. I don't want to talk about that right now. <laughs> I'm over, I'm over <laughs> But uh, but how, how are you guys? Diego, we missed you last week. Happy oh, yes, week. dude. I, I, I'm happy to be here. Of course, uh, just uh, spending it with family. I, I missed some of the last recordings. I wasn't able to rub it in for the Man Manchester Derby win, so that's kind of over and done. I can't even like... But personally, I feel good, man. I feel good. On, on a health-wise level, I'm feeling great. Being with, with you guys uh, on the bench again is, is also pretty good. And you guys are upgrading. Like, it's, it's going up. When, when we, we are upgrading. Yeah. Yeah, it's, we it's nice. Yeah, we're, we're expanding. Uh, hopefully, um, our crack producer team over there, you know, keeps us uh, <laughs> nice and steady throughout the stream. And uh, nothing happens uh, like last recording, which wasn't their fault. We're trying, we're trying. It wasn't their fault. Uh, 2.0 today. 2 oh, yeah, 2.0. 2 2 2 2 2 <laughs> so it's double the fuck up style. Third time's a charm. There you go. Hey, listen, okay. you, can't, you can't succeed without failing a couple so times. Tune in, in next week on the third try. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Even better. Oh, man. Uh, but look, yeah. um, if there's nothing else you guys want to say, I do have an opening question for you. But I'll leave it to you, Dyer. I see you're wearing a Florida Classic shirt. I feel like you wore that with some intention. Oh, no. It's just like... You just want a little ballsy? It, no, it's warm. You're getting oh. ballsy. What are you talking you about? You two balls in your chest. They're oranges. <laughs> They're oranges. <laughs> They're oranges. <laughs> They're orange soccer, so that's soccer can, balls. Can, can this, you, was, this was from the, the Florida competition. Can you tell us the background about, behind that? Uh, The background? Basically, I went to Florida... Uh, couple of weeks ago with my uh, cousins to participate in a soccer tournament down there and, uh -huh. and this is uh you know all to to all the soccer players that participated they gave us one of these it was like a participation was it thing. called the florida classic yeah Hot, i guess <laughs> Hot, i guess i don't know i'm just I'm, just, I'm I so mean, good I, at this i mean it's nice and warm and it's comfy so how many goals did you score die i scored zero why? Cause he had the messy shirt on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for real. Well, messy. I mean, I'm in a Florida, Florida Classic, not in the World Cup. Oh, I what do you so. expect? I guess so. I mean, yeah. If you if you're wearing a messy shirt, you definitely gotta be in Florida because only weird shit happens. <laughs> no, what was funny was that the whole kit, the the jersey had the three stars, but the shorts had the two stars. So, oh, so they, were they weren't done printing yet. Yeah, they weren't done. Pretty much. Yeah, they were like, oh, you know, no, we'll get to, we'll get to no, you weren't no, even so you weren't even balanced. No, actually, the no, third star, on. the third star fell on the pitch. Like that's how you knew the stitch wasn't good. So. Oh, Jesus, Jesus well, Christ! But yes, opening question. Opening question. All right. So my opening loop question for you guys to get everything nice and smooth: Is the transfer market overinflated? If so, how will you fix it? By 
dissolving Chelsea as a club, <laughs> removing them. Yes, and to add on, and then to add on to that, that's directed towards you, Nando. I see you in the chat, so shout out <laughs> to you in the chat, saying, <laughs> saying, yeah. saying, surprise, Josue is in a sleep, but we're already done with that conversation. But oh, I'm awake you, now, man. Thank I you, my... Nando, for chiming in. Anyone else out there that's uh, watching us live, feel free to drop some comments. I have my but... midday nap for this reason, okay? For this person, <laughs> for this be, purpose. You better be on your toes, then, Josue. Oh, yeah, I, you know barely, what? Barely, I came in and bumped my head already. <laughs> what? <laughs> I did. You did? <laughs> yeah, already. <laughs> It is uh, it is definitely overinflated. Not only do I blame Chelsea, I blame uh, Nottingham Forest putting their uh, their promotion money to good use. In their eyes, I guess. I mean, guys, in their it's, eyes. it's weird mm -hmm. hearing this yeah, coming from a United, United fan. <laughs> Given how much did you guys spend on Anthony, Maguire, Pogba? Uh, not, a much, not a lot. No. Not a lot. Not a lot. Just Sancho. Pen just pennies. Sancho. Just pennies. Casimiro. Just pennies. Just, pennies, just pennies. Just pennies. Listen, it, we, but, all know, um, we all know it started with City putting down 30 to 50 mil on over a dozen players and then acting like it's nothing. Like, we, we got to go back. And we, we can't just be like, I saw a post about that, actually, now that I remember. It was like, oh, since 2015. It's like, oh, that's so convenient since 2015. Why don't you bring it back to, like, 2010 once they had the influx of that money? Because 2008, 2009, City was still absolute garbage. Let's be honest. And then I, I would hope that you guys would agree that a player that's worth 25 million is a is a pretty big deal for any club like players over 25 it's like that's a significant investment i feel like not anymore but yes not anymore of, of course yes i agree with you back because then, yeah. that because 30 to 50 was what they were dropping on all these players and then all, and then right now and let me not get started let, let me just hold this no start start it start it start listen chelsea what right really now, grinds your gears you know what grinds my gears <laughs> that, that chelsea almost had a brand new 11 this window bro a brand new eleven, oh, really? and then and then I, I had made a joke about it, and and it's like Todd Bowley is gonna get like it's gonna get he's gonna be caught like Wolf of Wall Street, like like Donny A's off making all these shady deals, all these crooked deals, and then they're just gonna default on this payments. Like I, I can't wait for it to catch up. And the thing is that Juve fans were saying this not too long ago, like oh yeah yeah we we got away with it whatever, like look at us we're and then right now you reap what you sow, you know what I mean? Now they're mid table. I was it 12th, I think, the last I saw. And, yeah, and they think, lost I think against... The, dedu um, the deduction automatically dropped them to like 11th or something. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then they lost uh, the, like the following match, 2-0, I, I believe. So, listen, if it's only a matter of time, I only hope that uh, I, I'm given the, the life to witness, to witness the downfall. So, I got front row seats for okay. that one. You will be there no matter what. I'll be there, bro. I'll be there. <laughs> okay. All right. But I, So, how do you fix this, uh, I guess over inflation that is currently the transfer market i mean is this going to be the new norm going forward i think it is that's it so i think it is because now i mean especially us with the rumors of who we who might buy us there's going to be money there's going to be money so let me let me ask you this if for that's another thing too. there's the, going to be money unfortunately if the likes of enzo are going for how much 100 120 I, I saw one, i saw 120 it was 120 120 10 million euros how much is a player like and I'm just, I'm a, I'm gonna give you my example because this is what I'm relating it to. But Saka, how much is he is he going for then? It's gonna be uh, on current ridiculous. form, yeah. ridiculous. I mean, no, no, Enzo, Enzo, no, he doesn't even need not even, tax not even. Just he doesn't just, even just need form. Just English tax, English tax, ninety World minimum Club tax. Is it the no, fact that he's twenty one, ninety minimum. He probably goes for more, but I would never. Nah, one fifty minimum, bro. How are players like even more minimum? One fifty minimum. Aren't have no again? I'm not saying he's not talented. At these, World Cup these, hype. These who was? Who was? Somebody was talking about that. Uh, I, I'm interrupting, but somebody like a, a famous player, a former player, he was talking about that. Like they're riding on. It was a talk sport clip, of course, and they obviously put out stuff to kind of get us caught up in in the discourse. But I think he made a valid point. Spending that much on players with World Cup tax is always going to be a huge risk. Because not only that, like, and I, I made this point. I want to back it up with what I said about Ochoa. Ochoa has always been the number one goalkeeper. He's a meme now, like, like absolute goalkeeping god during World Cups because it's a short form tournament. You don't have to do it for a 38 game season. Right now, granted, he doesn't have an all star uh, defensive line in front of him, but he's eating up goals left and right at um, Salernitana in so Italy. You're telling me he had that in the World Cup? What? Yeah, that he had that world class defensive line in front of him at the World Cup. That, but that's the thing. Over time, okay, that's your over time, yeah, that's your mm. I got you. Of course, yeah. You know what? With Gallardo and freaking Montes, whatever these guys making mistakes. But if you're making mistakes over a 38 game season, that's gonna obviously add up. Yes. Okay. So back to my original point: if they perform well in short term, in the short term, 
how is it going to be long term? It's always a gamble. And I feel like spending that much on a player like Enzo specifically, and I already know there's already hate from people that are Argentina stands, Argentinians themselves, people that also believe that Enzo is, is pretty good because stats wise, he does have great stats for Benfica. We can't overlook that. Correct. However, what I'm saying is that's ridiculous to spend that much over that short of a window of his display of what his ability can be. Can he do it over a season? Several seasons. Because right now they only put 40 million on him, right? That's what I read. That their their initial payment was 40 million up front, and then they're going to be paying it off. It's 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 players on afterpay on layaway, and that bubble burst already. There's people that are that there's young people that are owning owing so much money because they decided to put their groceries like a, a 5.99 banana, and they're like, oh, I could pay it off in five years. a dollar, yeah, in five <laughs> in five payments of this much. <laughs> and still, listen, uh, I'm going off track now, but. My my idea is because it really grinds my gears. <laughs> is that uh, it's just it, it ruins it ruins the rest of the market for everybody else. Because uh, another valid reason, and and I could throw it back to you on that. Declan Rice has to go for minimum one fifty now, no matter what. You think Rice is better than Enzo? Hell no. But that's the thing. English tax, and he knows the league. He's been at West Ham. He knows the competition. So obviously they're going to be like, well, if this guy has no idea what he's getting into and they paid this much, West Ham easily can demand 150. I think before where they could maybe negotiate down, and that's going to suck for whoever's going to pick him up after. I don't think he stays at West Ham. That's my personal opinion. But yeah, I, I, I don't know what you guys think as far as that, but I feel like that's what that's, that's caused. I know your original question is how do we solve it? I'm too pissed off already that it's happening, so I have no idea how we solve it. Yeah. Uh, unless you guys want to get into like the, what is it, the contract caps. That's I mean, that, 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 contract caps, I would just love just to have so that way players aren't enticed by the money. Like, for example, Murdik, for example, could have gone for 80, 80 grand a week at Arsenal, but he's probably getting 200 grand a week at now at Chelsea. If there was a cap where, for example, I'm just, you know, spitballing right now, a, a player first year into the season, you can't give him more than 150K. That brings a lot more, at least, teams into the, into the, into the rings to throw their hats in and be like, all right, you know what, I can... I can play with that and at least give Mudrik the Mudrik, sorry, the decision as to where he wants to go. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm using him specifically because he broke my heart. He's a snake. He's a snake. Uh, <laughs> um, but can you consider? Where's that from? Where's that from? Where's that from? That was a pharaoh. Where's, Where's that, that from? Did I do it wrong? No, I did it right. Where's that from? Uh, um, come on. It's uh. uh yeah. Come on. Shit, 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 shit. I have a feeling it's like a little Nicky reference. Dodgeball. Like um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember. Jesus. Uh, Sorry, bro. Ben, ben oh, Stiller's too team. Too ben Stiller's team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am too young for that. The Cobras? I want to. Were they Cobras? Yeah, they're yeah, Cobras. 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 Yeah. Um, so, wait, so you can consider a player a snake even if he hasn't joined your club? Yes, because he was fucking <laughs> literally <laughs> stripping for us. Like, he was giving me a lap dance pretty much. In that's his so Arsenal funny. jersey. That's so funny. And me. then just like said, nah, fuck, I'm going for the money. I, that's not really what happened. I don't know what happened behind, you know, behind curtains, but that's, that's a, the way I'm reading it. That's, that's a terrible a image, by the huh? way. <laughs> <laughs> that's a terrible image, by the way. Why? Watching Mojo give you a lap dance. Especially oh, now. Shoot. Especially now, considering the, uh, hey, the fire he's under. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Hey. Not in my club. Not in my club. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. But um, no, I mean, the salary craps is one thing. I think that just allows teams to compete more, but. Just the overall prices on players, it just it just eliminates so many teams to even get into the into the ring to make a bid. For example, Bellingham, if he was going for eighty mil, Liverpool would have got him already. But the fact that he's going for a hundred plus or a one twenty plus, one thirty plus, yeah. it's, it just it just removes the opportunity for teams like Liverpool to get this player. He's probably gonna go to Real Madrid now because Real Madrid obviously have the money. So it just it just I, I, I want to know how to fix that that issue and then we get to salary caps because that's and just look at the NBA for an example. But as far as how the the the, the original transfer value, how, is that gonna get solved or it, again? Because we all know it's overinflated. Even they know it's overinflated. Like everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. Like do, are we have, do we have to get rid of the clauses that Barcelona put on the players that they all have to go for like 150 mil at least for the buyout clause? Like, do we get rid of that first, or what? What? What is the solution to lower these overinflated tax prices? Oh, sorry, player prices. Is there a solution? 
that I can think of, I'm not really good with the economic side of football, so I don't really have a. Or that, to be honest, but or yeah, just have more rich or o- have more just get rid of Chelsea. Have more have have more rich owners. That way, everybody has all the same money. That or <laughs> do oh they have, actually <laughs> implement financial fair play into this? Yeah, that as well. <laughs> Isn't that why it's there? Yeah, that is why it's have, there. Have they ever gotten in trouble about it? They got like, a few transfer bans, but they just buy ten players. The next yeah, they had on. like a year and a half uh, transfer ban yeah, or three transfer windows. Yeah, so they long. were exploiting yeah. the youth. Yeah, so they're making. Yeah. Up, they made up another reason why Chelsea should be disbanded. I'm looking straight into the camera. I don't know which one, but I, all three. <laughs> I, actually, I actually have one question. The contract length. How is yes. it up to eight years now? I, I, I thought I, Max is five. Well, no, they can decide that. I think that that's the, the thing. That's the agent's fault. I think that's the agent's fault for allowing players to sign into those contracts because it, it completely eliminates the opportunity for them to renegotiate two years into their contract where they're fucking destroying it. They only have three years left. So by the next year, some other team can come in for them. Now with eight years, they're fucking stuck there for the next six years, and they can't renegotiate no contract. So they're stuck on those wages. It's usually on the younger players too, because Enzo, yeah. how old is he? Twenty one. Twenty five. Twenty. What? Who? Isn't Enzo twenty five? Oh, he's twenty one. Oh Jesus, yeah. I'm off. Sorry. So he's going. So he has a contract with Chelsea until the age of twenty nine, thirty years and old. And by that time, let, let's be, let's say he does stay at, at Chelsea until twenty nine, and let's say Murdic does stay at Chelsea until he's, he's thirty. I think he's twenty two. Jesus. Nobody's gonna want him, prob- probably. Probably. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> ah. Unless, unless Madrid thinks like it's another Hazard. And if you're watching this, you probably think we're just completely bashing on Chelsea, which we are. We are. We are. We are. We are. But Absolutely, we are. Is, but this is what this is what the market is looking like for the big teams, the teams that have the money to to just throw around, and it's gonna get worse. I'm surprised they didn't see Newcastle do it this much. That's the thing. They don't, they don't, I don't they feel like it, they don't need to right they now. They did it smartly. Yeah, though. yeah. I think they did it more underhanded. And yeah. that's just, hey, that's Tim Full Hat Time for me. I feel like they did it more underhanded. They paced themselves a little bit. Let's just spend a little money here. A little look money at the, there. Uh, yeah. Look at the comments. Oh. Q said, yeah, but yeah, but they could probably leave the light fees. Like, look at Sterling, Maine. Who said that? Uh, capital Q. Um, they could leave for what? What's for, light, for light fees. Mm. Well, it depends. They can only leave for like light fees if it's That's near true. the end of the contract. For example, like Rice, he has after this. I'm pretty sure in 2024 is his last. It expires, so he'll probably be like, for example, if he was if he had four years left on his contract, he'd easily go probably 120 plus. But I'll probably go for 80. Just because 80 of the contract. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's say Mudrik, for example, two years from down Mudrik, sorry, two years down the road, <laughs> he's a flop. Yeah. How much is he going for? I mean, who knows? I mean, Half probably of the of what Chelsea spent. Oh, that's my that was my question to you guys. I guess I just kind of wanted to vent out our frustrations of as to what happened this transfer window, what transpired, and how Chelsea got away with it again. I want to know how Everton's going to get away with it. Mm, well, Everton just got their man Sean Dyche. Sean Dyche. Four, four, fucking two. Aren't you ready for terrorist football again, uh, Nico? I love it. Ooh. I time, watched that video actually. Time for two blocks the, of the, four. His, his four four two uh um, explaining the tactics. Coach master class. Yeah. Is it the one nil against Liverpool? I think so. Yeah. yeah. The four four two tech technical master class. I read you missed it. How how the old game, is the game's all he about left, uh, spaces. Huh? When when man left Liverpool how old was he? Thirty. You guys got fifty mil for him? I forgot. No, that. he's like 30, 35. Jesus Christ. I know Christ. forty. That's not bad. For a player at that age who was able to accomplish what he did at your club. Yeah. He probably did repay what his what was his initial price. Remember that? Like forty, forty five. You guys didn't really lose out on that deal. And I, if if <laughs> if Southampton money was on the market now, I'd be like probably eighty, ninety. Yeah. But isn't that crazy? Like years Absolutely. ago, how, how much is just fucking skyrocketed the yeah. price? Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we'll see though. We'll see. I mean, this is the new age. So just to piggyback off of that, new age, or other teams and I'm gonna give you my example because this is what I what I follow day in day out. Arsenal are not gonna be the ones to get into bidding worse. Obviously you saw with the, we saw that with Chelsea. They're gonna be the one who's gonna be sneaky and try to get that mm. aha player. Is that gonna come back and bite them in the ass? To Chelsea? No, to Arsenal. Or do they have to go in and just spend the fucking money? I mean they were they were willing to spend seventy mil on Casero. Casi- yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But they but uh there's other stuff that happened with that one apparently. Um but for it's not Mudrik. I read that after he went to Chelsea, Arsenal re- were regretful for not actually going in and just paying the fucking money to get him. So is that going to be something that 
clubs like Arsenal who don't want to overspend, are they going to pay the consequences down the road because mm-hmm. they're not? They're just trying to play it smart, play it smart. When in reality, the new world order is just fucking spend everything you have just to get the players. It could be because I did read that the terms were similar. And who said that? It was the um, I don't know if it was the the coach manager, but somebody affiliated, maybe even the club president for where Mudrik was. He gave an interview where he said, "Oh." The packages were very similar from both Arsenal and Chelsea. But after we were speaking with Arsenal, Chelsea just came in and Bowley called me directly and they just went all out. So it's like, I, I guess maybe a conservative approach to, to transfers is maybe something that isn't just, is not valued this right now. You got money, you got to spend it. And that also goes back to like in the Newcastle situation already seen it with city if you have so much money that you're backed by an entire like nation like nation fund to just throw money at it now you have the people at your club empowered to do that because you know it's like oh what we came in offering 70 and i know in the back of my head if he goes to 120 i got the money for i'm good for it so i'm gonna go in there looking all confident and that's gonna make people feel good at the end of the day i still believe it's a false false promise because you have to look at the footballing aspect. You can't. It can't just be about money. That's just my thought. Of course, I'm not a footballer, clearly. But man, I, I think I think that landscape has changed now with all the money from uh, the uh, what, what's it what's it actually called? Something uh, the sovereign wealth fund or something like that. It, it's 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 all like the 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 royal money that's coming in as far as clubs being owned by something like that. So I, I think it's gonna bite them in the ass. I think it's gonna be. Uh, a point where the clubs that don't do that, they might get left behind. And even though United are up for sale, looking at it from that perspective, I would much rather them being bought by a consortium of English investors, like a group of people, instead of it being foreign money. Because then, then at the end of the day, at least for me, whatever is worth, they're perpetuating the same thing that other clubs are already doing. Chelsea. So... Isn't the only reason why they're spending a shit ton of money because uh, Roman sold the club for like dirt cheap, and if you look at it, selling football club, I think it was like about two billion pounds, and they if if they they probably they're probably worth four to five billion pounds. So, I mean, it was a pretty easy deal at least for Bully and uh, was it Clear Lake or something like that, whatever. So it's clearly it's very clear they have the money to spend. So, yeah. But in terms of Arsenal, it depends because if if you think a player is your premium target and you think that player can change your team then i think you should play you should pay a premium price and i think there's a multitude of examples um from other teams who think that if a player is their their target their premium target then if you have to pay a premium price to get them then you pay a premium price to get them if you have the funds available so uh capital q says chelsea are also needed to sell players now they are going to be letting go of a lot of players for the low you did see an example of that in the transfer window also, he says Arsenal's are, are have very specific intentions. Now they will spend the money for the guy they want to get. So that kind of backs up your point. If the, if that's the guy that you think is going to turn the fortunes for your club, you're going to spend the money on them. Yeah. So that's a fair point. That's a fair point. But we do have a lot. Of, we do have more Chelsea coverage going down the road. This wasn't supposed to be a Chelsea topic, but it kind of turned into that because that they kind of stole the headlines. Honestly. Yeah, they did. Ugh. But we do have uh, overall gradings we're going to do on all the teams. So we'll get back into Chelsea. Very, very shortly. So, anything else? I know that was a, a long-winded opening question, but anything else you guys want to let out there? I wish you had a red card to give a red card to Chelsea, honestly. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. I could I could talk, I could hate on Chelsea all, all, like, all episodes. All episodes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You have a whole episode about episode. it. Bless you, Nick. Right, wow, so you hear that, Nando? We're gonna, what's up? Oh, That's crazy. Uh, hey, hey, but, you're supposed to be on our side, producer. Like, I, I don't know what's going on. For real. Oh, no, no, I'm, no, uh, I'm, no. I'm neutral. Neutral? neutral. You start, you're starting the pod as a neutral? Nando been real quiet since we started the Chelsea For talk, real. So I don't know. He's, well, he's let's, not even watching Let's give it a pause because all the Chelsea fans probably just jumped out like, oh, fuck these guys. They're yeah, just man. They're on club. So we'll, we'll, we'll save this for a little <laughs> bit later. Stick around for a little bit longer. Uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently today. It's because, obviously, there's no Prem this past weekend. We got Prem coming up this weekend. We're going to give you our mid-season reviews of all the teams. And I guess the biggest summer signing, the biggest impact a summer signing has had for your respective clubs. So, and then we'll get into the winter transfer. That just uh, that just ended, was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. yesterday. So, uh, we're going to go from first to fourth, and then we'll skip five, six, seven, eight. 
and get into ninth and tenth. <laughs> <laughs> Don't skip them, boy. Quickly. Highlight them, boy. I'm down for skipping. I'm down for skipping. No, nah, no. Nah, we, we have to give credit where it's due. We have to give credit where it's due. Guys. And, and, and where it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Got so, uh, starting off with the first place, five points clear. A lot of us, I, I regret not looking it up because I want to, uh, maybe you guys remember, but a lot of us, some of us, didn't even have him in, the, in our top four. Out of domestic cups, was still in the running for Europa. And five, again, like I said, five points here at the top of the table. Arsenal, what is your grade? I give him an A. I give him an A. Not going to lie. They they really impressed me. What? They only have one loss? One loss to United, yep. Yeah. Um, they really impressed me, proved me wrong, because I, I did have him out of the top four. So I give him an A. Okay. okay. I'm going to be a hater. Of course. <laughs> but I'm going to give him I'm going to give him an A. <laughs> I'm gonna give him an A minus, and I, that's only because I'm st- I still don't want to believe that they're that good. That's why I'm being a hater, and also because there are two games left against City that can go either way. And we saw that in the FA Cup that they they put up like I don't think City should have won that game. I think that was a BS freaking shot that Ake got off to be able to slot it. I got two cents on that. Honestly. So um, I think it, I think it should have gone the other way. But again. Because of that, and, and I said this before, City are one comeback win away from from literally dissolving that five points. And yes, they do have a game in hand, but without counting those three points already, that's five. So those two matches against City, and I say comeback win because um, I don't see them, I don't see them commanding it when they go to Arsenal. I feel like Arsenal could probably take a lead there, and they're what that's what I'm saying. They're one comeback win away from eliminating those five points because that's six already so i'm giving them a minus only because it's still it's still a, a great it would have been an a but they lost to united so you can definitely tell this guy's a united fan sounds like gary neville 2.0 <laughs> <laughs> i was just gonna give it simple you guys are top of the table for a reason so you guys get an a you know i'm just gonna keep it simple i mean it's i mean he makes some valid points too but yeah i did, I did at the end of the, at the but but at the end up. of the but at the end of the day, they're still right <laughs> they're still top of the table. They're top yeah, for a that's reason. Why I so. said A minus <laughs> A <laughs> A no minus. Right. Uh, Parthay say a B. No, I'm kidding. A plus. Say a B. No, 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 no. Say a B. Say with your chest, Nick. We're live. You can't say with the chest. You don't mean it with your chest. We're live. We're live. He'll say with his chest when he when we come to Chelsea. Don't worry. A plus. A plus? I mean, yeah, no one expected them Mid-season. to be there. Five points clear. Mid-season. Part sure. Best. They're playing the best football in the league. I, mean, I didn't know you could go that high. A plus. I just remember in college, I'm, you could only go as high as an A. That's uh, it. Uh, okay, okay. How about this? If I if I gave those those two reasons for A minus, what are your reasons for A plus? Because uh, I think we're all in agreement that the benchmark is A, but you're going plus, so why? Uh, no one expected them to be top of the league. I didn't have them in my top four. And for them to be five points clear. Um, at the top of the table, and it's not like they're getting lucky or whatever. They're clearly playing the best football in the league, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, my two cents on what you were talking about, the, the FA Cup game, and the reason why I'm not as worried as I once was, because, yeah, you think of Man City, oh, shit, it's fucking, it's going to be a nightmare. We had, I think, almost two, if not three times more changes on our starting 11 than they did, yet we still went toe-to-toe with them, and I personally think we had the better cut chances to put the goal, to put the ball away. Ake had a had a an unlikely goal that he usually doesn't score. So give him credit where it's due. He scored it. He put it away. You got, you got to do what you got to do when you're there. So give him the points there. But I think that with our starting eleven, because I think they have one change in their starting eleven as opposed to us. I think they have four or five. With our full eleven, I feel like we we will actually. I think we will do really really well against them in both fixtures. Sure. Because that was at man, that was at, at the at the empty head. That was at empty head, yeah. Honestly, bro, dude, I did not hear their fans. I heard we were down. But there was 24 of them in the stadium. What do you mean? <laughs> For real, right? <laughs> they they were down. Da- we were down, and I still heard our fans singing. I was like, this this is not the regular season. That's why I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with A just because we haven't won the league yet. A plus is I think is gonna but it's is, a mid season review, though. Yeah, I know, mid-season. I know, but I, I wanna be I wanna hold my so A plus I think is a B. Beat United or drew United and just went undefeated so far. You know, the only one team to do it. Maybe you can do it again. Who knows? You never know. So maybe next year. <laughs> Talk your shit. You feel me? <laughs> feel but uh, yeah, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give an A. A yeah, scratching that A plus part, but uh, almost there. Now, 
who had the biggest impact from our summer signings? Jesus, Sinchenko, Matt Turner, Vieira. And I'm going to put an asterisk next to this because he's not a summer signing, but he feels like a brand new signing because he's his first season with us. William Saliba. I think it's Saliba. I think it's Saliba, hands down. That's my vote. And and I feel like the the idea behind the uh, World War II flashbacks with uh, Mustafi and uh, all these other characters, even co- he, although he was he was a, a team player and a talisman for the club, Koscielny also had his moments. Koscielny also had his no moments. Toxic, though. But that's the thing. Is Saliba has come in after his uh, after his loan. That's also something that I that I take into consideration because he's he's somewhere else. He has to prove it, and then he comes back and then I, I he's clearly cemented himself as part of like the center back pairing. So. Uh, I, I'm gonna give it to Saliba, even though he wasn't technically a summer signing. It, it his first full season, the same as these other guys. I'll give it to I'll give it to Will. I am. Uh, I second that, but to me, like the ultimate player that Arsenal, I really like, kind of like just can't believe it is Odengard. I mean, I okay. know he's not. So he, yeah, he officially signed in the summer. So he, I guess you could say he's a summer signing. Then, I, right. I, then I would, I would choose Odengard, dude. Because like, come on, young kid, starting eleven, captain of the team, scoring goals, providing assists, being part of the play from box to box. He's he's fantastic to watch. I, I hate the fact that Madrid let him go, but I'm happy to see that he's getting the playing time that he needs. How much does he go for now? Right now in this market, just. just I know we're side tracking right now, but he went. He Ooh. came to Arsenal for thirty five. For thirty five mil. Mm. I say maybe just between hundred to hundred ten. No way. Wow. At the no. moment. No way. At the moment, it's only his first season. That's what I'm it's saying. It's only his first season. Bukayo Saka, he's been showing promise for a couple seasons now. So mm-hmm. I think Bukayo Saka is a little bit more than Odengar, just because he's been showing more promise, not just at the club level, but international level yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I rate Bukayo Saka more on the money price than the Odengar. Okay. All right. I, I'm just curious to see what your thoughts on that were, just to see how the, the change in prices would be from then to now. But, and, and mind you, it hasn't even been a full season yet. I mean, it's definitely triple the value from his uh, original pricing when he first came on. Yeah. But no more than Bukayo. Okay. Biggest impact so far? That's a tough one because I think in the beginning of the season, it was definitely Saliba. And then as the season went on, it's kind of shifting towards Odegaard. So it's kind of hard to pick. If I have to pick one, I'd probably say Odegaard. Just because of everything Dyer has said. And he's just, he's, he's one of the, <clears throat> he makes everyone's world starting 11 right now, I think. He's just one of the better midfields out there right now. He's, so. he's that I, midfielder I, I, that I Spurs think, is missing. But I think, okay, let's not is. make okay. this about Spurs, first of all. Second of all, I feel like Odegaard can't Cry do that if he doesn't man. know that Saliba's behind him. So that's why I give Saliba more credit. And of course, I'm trying to look at it from what I see. But if if Odegaard isn't secure on like, okay, if this if this crazy pass doesn't go off and we get hit on a counter, I got somebody who can make up for that. And so I feel like that sense of security comes from the person behind him. I'm giving it to Saliba. But I mean, Odegaard is also a good shout. It is. It really is. Nick, what do you say? Uh, I'd, I'd actually say, I know Zinchenko is, you know, flavor of the month right now. But I actually yes. say the one to like just... Everyone noticed that just raised a completely different level. Probably say grabber Jesus. Uh, I think in the beginning of the season, you notice how much he transformed that attack. Even even with even with Marinelli and Saka improving from the season prior, I think when Jesus came in, he just saw a different. He just ra- he just raised the ceiling, um, especially in those first five ten games. And I think, in my opinion, I think he was one of the catalysts of what you were seeing of Arsenal just like playing fluid football up top. Yeah. Damn. Marco, I'm, I'm kind of stuck between this one. I, know I didn't ask you about the grade, but I'm sure you're going to give an A, A plus anyway. But I, I'm, I'm asking you this. Who do you think has been our biggest impact so far? Because I, I, I didn't put all the guys here. I regret not putting him here because he was a summer signing. Yeah. I see what Dyer's saying. I see what you're saying with Jesus. I see what you're saying with Saliba. I feel like Jesus was also a flavor of the, of, a, of the moment because it was for a good amount of time because now we're seeing him, Eddie, do it. But I don't think Eddie would have done it if it wasn't for Jesus. They, they, they're two completely strikers. Yeah, but I strikers. think Jesus pushes Eddie to be what he's doing to to the player he is right now. But also, I don't know. I don't know. Who who do you think has been our biggest impact so far? Just because I feel like we needed him a little bit more, Saliba. 
I think that what we were missing was a player like him in that back four. We had it a little bit because we had Gabriel and Ben White on that back and the two center backs for that last year before Saliba came in. And we're doing okay, but there was still errors to that, that, were, that were happening. But Saliba came in and showed his press and showed what he, what he can do. And I think after that, like after the first game, he, we, he just won his position. We already knew what Odegaard could do. Did we though? Enough. Enough because, I mean, there's a reason why Real Madrid purchased him, right? And they sold him. But he, because he never got the chance. We gave him that chance. He did somewhat what he did now, just with now he's doing it a lot better, but he was showing glimpses of what he does here at Real Sociedad. Okay. That's why they brought him back to Real Madrid, but they didn't give him the chance or the playtime. So us picking him up in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the winter transfer window, I believe that's when we picked him we up. Loaned him for, yeah, I'm alone for winter and then officially assigned Yeah, the exactly. Mm-hmm. So he showed us a little bit of a glimpse of what he could do, but once they we signed him, he just like, he ran. He ran with the captaincy. He ran with, with being that 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 camera. He ran with the number ten, even though he wore number eight. But to me, Saliba has a bigger impact just because we needed that. And you mentioned uh, Mustafi. Come on, remember the Mustafi <laughs> oh, days? I do remember those. Days. I'm gonna forget. So those days. we we've had an <laughs> Odegaard type, but we've never had a Saliba. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Who, who was your Odengard type before that? Fucking we, we, we had the camera. We had the camera. We had o- Ozil. Ozil, even though he's not identical no to o- Odegaard, he did that. You had that, quality that, players. That, that, he was a quality position. player. Yeah, he, he had that up there. It's just in the back four, we never had what Saliba brought us. And that combination with Gabriel, come on, man. Uh, to me, he's been the best. I mean, I can see where you're at. You could be like 50. To me, it's like 51, 50, 49. Like that Saliba just got that one extra point just because we we, we needed him more. Un sabio, un sabio in el chat. Thank I, you. I, I see, I see what Thank you guys you, are saying, and I I definitely agree with a lot of it. But I'm gonna stick with Odegaard. Right. I'm gonna stick Fair. with Odegaard just I mean, because. It works still. <laughs> yeah, it works. I mean, I'm not saying Saliba is definitely. I think each each player that, for example, Jesus, Zinchenko, Saliba, mm-hmm. and Odegaard have each had a moment in this season so far where they've been the reason why we're looking so good. But I think. All the guy has been the central one the entire time. Oh, 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 You seen it here, guys. You see you saw it here first. Thank God it wasn't on my laptop. Who was that? Was that was that Liverpool and Liverpool and uh try helping you guys out. Aston Villa. Um You should just you should just let it go. It's just Liverpool, man. Yeah, for real. It happened, but real, real quick, just to bring it back to the chat, Capital Q saying Jesus sparked the season's momentum, yeah. and Zinchenko changed your structure completely. He's the game changer for me. You Ooh, guys don't Zinchenko. play. You guys don't play the same without That's Zinchenko. That's true because with uh, the tyranny, then it's a different. It's a different. Okay. Huh? There's no, there's no towels there. There could be paper towels. Did he um, say diaper? If you can ask yeah. Raquel real quick, yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. To your point, Cap- uh, Q. I think you're right. Zinchenko does change a lot. But uh, I don't know. Just throughout the season, all they got to be in the captain and all. I think he carries more weight with him. Yeah, yeah, he's been injured. All right. Well, look, that's Arsenal. We will get into the winter signings. I saw you mentioned Jorginho. We'll get into that a little bit later when it comes to the winter signings. Ugh. Let's go. Let's go to Man City. <laughs> I, I'm mixed about that right now. But let's go to Man City real quick. No Man City fans here, unfortunately. Well, fortunately, I don't know how you look at it. Uh, second place, ex- still battling out for the title right now with Arsenal. Still playing for the Carabao, out of the FA Cup, still playing for champions. Overall grade. I'm going to give him a B. Mm. That's generous, bro. A solid B. Actually. No, no, you gave it. You gave it. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I just remember what happened yesterday. A B minus. What happened yesterday? Con- Cancelo left. All right. We'll, Con- get that. we'll get into that one, too. Yeah, we'll That's get into that one. Con- Cancelo left. Like... You you buy this top striker in the world, and you know yes he's scoring all these goals and everything, but you're still second in the league right now. I mean like they're they're having I'm not saying they're having a terrible season, but they they do not look like the Man City that they were before as a team as a unit. But as a as a single player standout for Holland, it is it has shown you know greatness. Uh, but with I'm like talking while these guys are cleaning. Do it, bro. Do it. Do it. <laughs> we're we're uh, 
we're absorbing all of your uh, opinions. Oh. Absorbing. Oh. Yes. Oh, okay. oh wow. So we're we're absorbing so, your so your opinion. My opinion's a spell. Yeah, it's a uh, spell down. But <laughs> but anyways, and then like they so they, B minus a B minus. I, I give them a B minus only because. Uh, and also the sell of, not the sell, the loan with the option to buy, right, mm -hmm. of Cancelo. I mean, that that's one of the best left backs in the world, in my opinion. I don't know about you guys. But, I mean, to... If he was the best, he'd still be there. I don't know. He's looking for more playing time. He's going to another great club. Um, so, yeah, B minus okay. for Man City. Watch your book, dude. B minus. That's crazy because there's, there's like a place... They're, still, they're literally just as lucky. To win. But here's the thing. The only player, the, the Man City has a B minus, but Holland, I give him an A. Holland himself. Man City is not, they don't look like Man City that I've seen in the past couple of years. So. All right. B, B, is it B? B minus? Holland is Man City. That's my opinion right now. So what was your overall yes, grade again? He said B minus. B minus. Yeah. Don't let, don't let your book get soaked. Oh, that's it. It's over. Bad omen. <laughs> no, put the West Ham on top. That way the Arsenal won't fall. Yeah. I, I, I give him a C. A C? I'm giving Man City a C. I'm mid so mid mid season mid season review. Man City. Sounds like a bona fide hater. Man, man. Abso uh, absolutely. Yo, this is my we, hater rate. We this is Gary my hater rate. This, Gary is, Gary this podcast. is my hater rate right now, okay? And I'm going to tell you why this tastes incredible okay a c because by their standards it's not good enough it's not good enough it's not the only thing that i think is their saving grace is the fact that holland has scored 50 bajillion goals up until now but 25. we we see some discord we see the cancel alone that apparently of course hearsay rumor rumor has it, rumor has it. thank you uh that it's basically that <laughs> he had a fallout with pep and that it was like some training bust up and he wanted more minutes i don't know what happened it seemed like a disciplinary issue where he's like, all right, well, if you're not going to play me, I'm going to go fuck off somebody somewhere else. And he's like, all right, then go ahead. He's like, I'm going to do it. And the pub was like, go ahead. And so now we see him putting an assist for, for Bayern Munich today, uh, coincidentally. Bundesliga tax on? Bundesliga tax. Bundesliga tax. Bundesliga tax. It was a nice yeah. cross, though. Bundesliga tax. <laughs> it was a really nice <laughs> cross. <laughs> uh, what, what are the pro clubs? <laughs> I, I still think, though, especially with the, the defensive issues that they had this season, the fact that they look so shaky, I, I think they're being propped up very much by Holland. And as soon as we saw, I think it was just after the World Cup had finished and the league restarted, how they, because I remember we spoke about it. If Pep finds a way to involve Holland in e their everybody eats sch like schematic, it'd be over. But thankfully, that hasn't worked. And I feel like the, some of the results that they've had wouldn't have happened um, had they been on the same level that we've seen them. Of course, I'm saying mid-season review. Mid-season review. So I'm giving them a C. By their own standards, it's a C. I feel like they should have been running away with it already because they have the ultimate freaking striker. Like, they have Haaland. How are they not first and by a long freaking shot? That's already. what I'm saying. And, and it, like, I can't wait until those 25 goals goes to, goes to waste. He's not bringing the record, by the way. I'm standing by that. Oh, uh, not, not, to, not to backtrack, just going to catch up on Q's comment real quick. Go ahead, go uh, ahead. To be honest, it'll be a drop-off, but all they got is replaceable, more so than Saliba and Sinchenko. That's a fair point. Very fair point. Uh, also, he thinks this is the w the weakest Man City team in the past three years. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. They're, they're, they're brittle, especially in the back, I think, and, and like... Okay, they they do have some injuries. We'll, we'll give them some. I'll give them some credit for that. The fact that Stones has has injured again. Ruben Diaz, Ruben Diaz hasn't been available all season consistently, but still by by their standards, see, you know, I'll end it on that. Okay. I think all your points are valid. Thank you. And then you're gonna contradict me. So don't even say that. But don't he's, even gonna, say, he's gonna say B. Look at but, that. Look at that small. But they're still second. <sighs> so so, I think a C is a little harsh. So you're going to tell me a team that adds on Holland is okay with being second at this point in the season? They're not, but at least they're still up there. It's not at least. I mean, they're above you. They're yes, above they United and Spurs. They, they, they and lost. Chelsea they lost United. Doesn't now. matter. They lost United. Doesn't matter. For now, but I will. I'll agree with Dyer and say B minus. Okay. B minus. Thank All you. Right, fine. I'll take. I'll take that. Yeah. B minus. B minus. 
Yeah, next year to the Plain point. and simple. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, you guys have yeah, already explained the points. Well, I'm trying to look at the context right now, and I, I want to give them a C, but I kind of want to give them a B plus because they're That's in... a big jump. C to B plus? Well, the reason why I'm saying that is because... And I'm trying to like, look at the whole scenario that they're going through. They got rid of Jesus. Got rid of Sterling. Got rid of Zinchenko. Three, I would say, fundamental players that help them play the way they play. Then you bring in Haaland. Now you got rid of Joe uh, jo Cancelo. Mm-hmm. Who else did they get rid of? Alvar- they brought in Alvarez, too. Julian Alvarez. Yeah. That's it, right? Um, I, else? I want to look that oh, up. Oh, because Fernandinho retired Akanji, after Fernandinho that. retired. Was Akanji a, si- a signing, too? Akanji's a new yeah. signing. This is not a new team, but a, a fairly newish team that are still learning to play together and are yet still competing for the title already. And Halanadi has 25 goals. So I can't overlook the fact that they got rid of so many such influential players, yet they're still a, a small drop off from where they are, I think. So I'm going to give them a B plus. I think you're giving B plus because Man City gave you Gabriel Jesus and, and Zinchenko. But, and that's what I mean. Look, they gave us two players, and look how much that shot us up. Look how much that shot us up. And they have, yeah, they took a hit, but how much of a hit is, is if, if you're in second place, five points behind? I mean, they it's lost. It's not really much of a hit. But now Man City lost two of their key left backs. And, but, and they're still competing. Zinchenko and Cancelo. And they're still competing. So who's going to play there? That's my question. Uh, Rico Lewis, I, baby. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You also, and you also got to remember, Cancelo was a makeshift left back. Yes. And he's supposed to be a right back. He's yeah. supposed to be a right back, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, it's kind of hard to overlook. It's kind of hard to not not give credit to them. It, I think everybody's so used to them just like dominating year in and year out. This has got to be a transition period at some point. I think this is their transition period. And if this is their transition period, I'm scared to see what it what it's going to be like when they're actually all guns blazing. Everybody's healthy and good to go. I have a theory. What do you theory? Guardiola's leaving after this season. I thought he said an extension. Please. Please. Where's he going, Barcelona? I think he's going to Barcelona. Okay, well, he did say he fucking Barcelona call me. I'll go right, I'll go right back. Because didn't Messi say he was going to go back to Barcelona or some shit like that? There's a rumor about that, too. If Messi goes, Guardiola goes. Uh, if, if that happens, can we all just become Barcelona fans? Hell no. Oh, Hell what the no. fuck? Huh? What the okay. is going on? Are we still live? <laughs> I hope we're still live. I mean, we know he's not drunk because he spilled his <laughs> beer. So. I hope we're live. Uh, Nathan Ake has set the big time. Yeah, he has. 100%. Uh, all right, let's move on to Newcastle. Third place, Carabao Cup final versus United. Still in the league as well. They're challenging for the title. Overall rating. Great. Ooh, I mean, compared to where they were last year, I have to give them a fucking A, man. Mm. It yeah. It's a solid A because last year they, I mean, last year they were, like, battling to try to stay up top, to st- try to get mid-table at, at best. And now they're in, what, thir- third place? Fourth? Third. Third. In the final of the Carabao Cup, first final in 40 years. Yeah, it is. P- plus, I think it was 76 or something. I thought, not. Like, I thought they were in the final against United. What? No, no, no. Castle. This is the first final in 40 years, like, of the Carabao Cup. Oh, I thought they were in the final. Oh, wait, was it against United? The last final that they had? That they had? Yeah. That I can't tell you. I don't know off the top of my head. But I'll Any- anyways, the last time they were in the finals was in the 1970s. Um, any chance of winning silverware? I mean, of course they Fair probably came close in the nineties with Alan Shearer, but I have to give him an A. They 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 had a huge jump with all the signings that they have. Jim out I don't even know how to say his fucking name. Yeah, him. Trippier, he's been great. The the whole defensive line. Shar actually, I feel like he picked up his playing style. Like he he was not that good before. Now he's actually a lot better. Um, Nick Pope, he's playing great defense. Uh, great goalie. I don't know. I just I feel like I'm slurring my words right now. Uh, Thanks to so. this. But anyways. What are you, I, what are you drinking? Apple see. juice? Yeah, apple juice. Apple juice. Uh, all in all, I'm done talking. Okay. Hey. I, I, I completely <laughs> forgot I actually asked this to you guys. Um, and I, I hate it. Again, I don't want to digress too much. But as far as uh, impact signings for uh, City in the, in the summer, 
You have Haaland, Kevin Phillips, Ak- Akanji, and Sergio Gomez. Yeah. Forgot about Kevin Phillips. He's Kevin not even Phillips. playing, what though. What a waste. What a waste. What a waste. I think so say Haaland. It has to be. Haaland. Okay. All right, move yeah. on. Okay, uh, move so, yeah. So, you said A? A. For Newcastle? A for uh, Newcastle. I agree that I agree for an A. Last major trophy Newcastle won was in the 1954-55 season, lifting the FA Cup by beating Manchester City. Mm-hmm. The last time United faced Newcastle was in 1999 uh, for the same thing right before they won their, their trouble that year. Okay. Uh, but I give them an A. I, I think, obviously, we're going to see the influx of money, so it's not going to be... It may not be something that's natural or organic, and we could probably see a bunch of world-class players in that in that team eleven uh, soon. But I think that having reached where they where they are right now, they also have only one loss that ninety eighth minute freaking uh, winner by Fabio Carvalho against Liverpool uh, when they played at Anfield this season. That's their only loss. That's it. That's crazy. Which is incredible, the, and considering the fact that they've been playing that back line with Botman share. Uh, Dan, Dan Byrne, Trippier, who's like 30 freaking nine or something. Dan Byrne, the makeshift fullback, because ba- <laughs> because Maddie Target, another signing, yeah. has been out most of the season. Exactly. <laughs> it's. In, it, I I think I think that's definitely worth noting. And also, you got uh, you got Nick Pope, who mm-hmm. I, I've had an affinity for um, for a while. I think he he should be honestly England's number one. He does, but he definitely deserves it by now. I I feel like all around they haven't like okay we're all afraid myself included of them being able to spend the money when when they get the checkbook ready, but they've done it with Almiron, Gimaraes, Joe Ellington, who was a complete shambles just two seasons ago, yeah. And then they and then they reinforce themselves with players like Chris Wood, like and they're still there. So I think I think well, they deserve a lot of credit. Chris for that. Chris Wooden is now at Nottingham. Of co- yes, of course, which <laughs> which is funny. And then Callum Wilson can't even stay fit. Alexander Isaac came on two days ago or yesterday, I think and then it he was. Might, he might have a head injury now. Yeah, also. now he probably has a he concussion, got, he, so he's he out again. Hit, he got hit in the head with with the, with the ball. Yeah, like <laughs> smacked it into him. <laughs> Pretty, I, I'm, I'm gonna give it a. I'm gonna give him a solid A. I also okay. want to make sure that Eddie Howe shout is gets oh, a shout out because I think true. I think he's gonna hopefully make make a lot of things happen. Okay. And the Eddie Howe trajectory. I want to shout that I, I it would have been nice for Graham Potter to have the same thing. I feel like if Potter was given the same kind of uh, patience, I don't think he will. And this is me just being a Chelsea hater again. I'm just trying to shove that in there. Uh, I feel like those two uh, manager, I guess, careers should have should have been neck and neck. Yeah, oh. But Eddie Howe, miles ahead, solid A for, for Newcastle. All right. Yep, solid A as well. I mean, none of us thought... None, we did think Newcastle would eventually get to this point. Not this quickly. Just not this quickly. Yeah. So very quickly. A, just a. They they bought smart. They they bought exactly where they needed to plug up their gaps. A. 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 Biggest crack, crack a. 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 Biggest summer 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 signing impact. You have Isak, Batman, Batiman. I'm gonna say Batiman. Uh, Pope and Target. I'm gonna say, oof, it's between. To me, it's between too, Botman. Huh? Is he a summer signing? No, no. He was, he, the, he, uh, he was last year, January. Okay. I would have to say in between Botman and Pope. I mean, right now Pope, I think is Pope. ranked number one in the world for like the most clean sheets or something like that. Yeah, and the, the amount of points he saved them. Yeah. Is why I think they're up there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Then, Pope. then I'll switch to Pope. Then I'll, then I'll say Pope if it's because that was my debate because yeah. I couldn't choose. Yeah. 100%. Diego. Yeah, man. I, I I already said that I have a, a soft spot for for Nick Pope coming off of a relegated Burnley. He's thirty, so definitely that's prime age for a goalkeeper. Wait, what? Yeah, I thought he was like twenty four, twenty five. No, no, man, got a Nick, baby face. Nick Pope is old in terms of I obviously footballing age, but like he's done great, and 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 I don't know his save stats off the top of my head, but I do know at least fantasy wise, he's pretty he's pretty much up there as far as a shot stopper. So. Yeah. Definitely Nick Pope. I don't think I have him in fantasy. Yeah, Nick Pope. 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 Now let's move on. I, I'm curious about this grade. Pope so the Pope of Newcastle. Manchester United, currently in fourth place. Carabao Cup final. Still competing in all competitions. Eric Den Hag's first season. Overall grade. Um, I'll give him a... I'll give him a B. A B. I'll give him a B. Okay. Yeah. Just because... Um, they're doing really well. Definitely better than what I expected. I did have them finishing in the top four. I think fourth, to be honest. Um, but Eric Ten Hag definitely brought out the fire of you of United. 
um, with the signing of Casemiro, uh, Lisandro Martinez, and that that pair between him and Varane has definitely shown that you know, okay, now they got defense. Um, Rashford definitely on the come, like definitely got a lot a lot better than what he used to. I I, I feel like Eric Ten Hag definitely brought the fire back up with United. Um, and United is, is, is definitely showing with their win against Man City, quote unquote, should have been a draw. Um, wow. Not going to say it. You, you weren't here last week, so we're not going to yeah. talk about no, it. No, 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 I know. Um, <laughs> but I'll, 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 I'll give him a B. I'll give him a B. Yeah. How does he say to give him a B and all he said was positive things? Like, I was waiting for him to say, like, but because of this, you bring it like. The benchmark but should be because, the top. But you're in fourth place, so that's why you have a B. Yeah, because we're tied on points, and it's only goal differential. That Otherwise, we'd be third. And that's only two points off of City. Okay, third, still B. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. I I'm, swear I'm, to God, if you say A... What do you mean if if you say A? It's going to be A. Jesus because they were absolute dog shit in the first two games. And I remember I remember on this bench, there's a lot there's a lot of chatting going on. A lot of chatting. You know what? Just to save you the question for my answer for Spurs, I'm going to give him an A. Okay. I, I, I think we all kind of figured. <laughs> I'm I'm giving I'm giving Eric Ten Hag an A, especially because getting battered by both Brighton and Brentford spelled disaster. And I think managing that those those murky waters up into this midpoint of the season, I feel like they would be definitely between sixth and eighth easily. And you also, I'm also giving him personally credit for navigating the whole Ronaldo bullshit the way he did. There is also, uh, even though it hasn't, it, it wasn't during his tenure per se, but there was, there's still the Greenwood bullshit that we're do, that we're dealing with. So that's another thing. Yeah, exactly. And and then. On top of that, you have uh, a nice crop of young players that he was able that right now he's showing that he's able to give them some playing time. So I'm giving him an A for those for those three reasons. The bounce back from the two losses at the beginning of the season, handling probably what would have been a, a calamitous end to the drama that Ronaldo was bringing to the club at that point. And then three, he's it looks like and this is probably why I'm not. I wouldn't say a plus for midseason, is because he doesn't rotate, and I and I think that's one thing that could come back to bite him, that he likes to use his eleven and he doesn't like to switch players where they go. So, yeah. All right, Gary Neville, Hobbs, move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm also gonna say a, oh, God. but oh, my yeah, God, bro. bro. But more realistic. That's crazy. Barely. But my reason for. My reason. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. How are you gonna give Arsenal an A? You didn't even have him in the top four, did you? No, no. Yeah. Minus. I gave him an A minus. Uh, Alright, never mind. I rest my case. Wait, so you have you gave United a higher grade than Arsenal? Yeah, by by just by just one smidge because of what Ten Hag <laughs> had to deal what with. Ten Hag did not because of what the team did throughout the whole entire. Wait, so you yeah. have United as a I'm the one drinking. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So you think United have had a better season than Arsenal? Yeah, absolutely. At the mid at the mid season, United have done much better because they had everything going for them to be absolute garbage. At this and point, I'm the about fact to give Everton a those, B. Those two those two losses that they had, those two losses that they had spelled everything going wrong. The fact that Ronaldo wasn't working in that team spelled even more things going wrong. I don't think I don't think that there's and it's fine if you don't want to give him credit for it. I will. I am gonna give him credit for it. So I'm a uh, firm believer there is vodka in that bottle. Yo, and now absolutely facts, not. Facts. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I am looking into the eyes. <laughs> and by the famous words of Mr. Scarface, the eyes, Chico, they never lie. They never. And you are lying. <laughs> I'm, lying. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not lying. All right, guys. What's your reason so, for giving all uh, United? So my reason for giving him a day is not even is not even because of the, the footballing aspect and how their season has gone but it's because of all of the backroom stuff that has been happening so let me get this straight you guys are giving a's because of things that aren't so, aren't related to what the main focus is of the sport but fixing a lot of the stuff that's going on behind the scenes is helping how the players are performing on the pitch okay i, I didn't ask for an eric ten ha grade i asked for a manchester united grade yeah full spoiler it, okay so full... they're, they're tied on points with the third place team and that's it like full... if i'm if i'm going to give newcastle an a I would I would give United an A. But Newcastle weren't even expect. Nobody thought they were gonna be here. And nobody thought United would have been there either, uh, especially well, with last I'm season. Sure you did. 
Especially with last season, of course, because I'm a fan. But I'm talking about I realistically. Think, if we're looking I, at last season and the way, the, and the way that four. stands, I think the way that ended. I think not many people expected United to be comfortably in top four. I think it was more so they're like they're just yeah. Make there's it. a gap. Like, don't don't just get it twisted. It. Look at fourth and fifth. Three point gap. That's, that's, that's fine. Three point gap. We're talking about all City are come, right no, there to Arsenal. Five, we're five, five, hold on, three. hold on. He's talking hold about on. City and Arsenal. Yes, because oh, they points. play each that other. Means nothing. Because they the play each other. So let's let's look at context, guys. Points. Let's look Bro, at context. Who do, who do Arsenal play? The, the team that's five points behind them. So at six points, so you have to play against that one team. That's the much bigger bias, threat than bias. than three points, oh, obviously. <laughs> I think City have the possibility to beat that team. If we're anybody else that, that Arsenal had to make up games against, fine. How different different conversation. How many more do Arsenal have to do to prove you guys wrong? It's oh, not about proving us wrong. they haven't faced anybody yet. Oh, they haven't faced the Big Six yet. Oh, they haven't faced Man City yet. How many? Oh, they have Europa yet. Oh, they have FA. How many more challenges do we have to go through until we get the little bit of respect? And yet... You guys have one good run of purple patch form, and all of a sudden, hey, he's everywhere because Eric Ten Hag knows to be a fucking cheerleader for Manchester United and kick Ronaldo out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over this, bro. Hey, I'm listen, fine. I've shown I've shown nothing but respect for Arsenal all season. So yes, far. you have, but if, I'm just I'm just uh, trying to understand this A that you're giving you. You know, if you give a B plus because they're they're doing good, nothing not they're doing bad, but. To say an A, you're telling me that they and you're giving Man City a B minus. Like, I'm, I'm just like, I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry. I, I need to just jump in. <laughs> Dude, yeah, he does. Well, for, that, well, he for, does. I'm literally almost done. <laughs> he does. I'm literally given, almost done. Given, Do we have any popcorn? Given where, <laughs> given where United have come from. But that, that's the thing. This is not about where they come. They they put themselves there. This mid season review. I'm yeah, not they were last. The, they were last so after three games. That. You have to account that's that. why I'm saying that's an A effort because now you're tied with third place. Oh my God, participation trophy. <laughs> what, it is a participation trophy because it's mid season. Nobody cares about that. Where it's a participation conversation. I don't. I, if you want to take context out of it, that's fine. But I'm recognizing what this team did. Because of the obstacles that they put in front of themselves. Nobody else is responsible for So you're for telling that. me that the two first games do not count. You're starting off from third and on. And that's why they, res they, res they exactly, deserve a nine. Uh, exactly. A. What do so you the mean? First two, what? The first two say, don't say count. it again. Say it so again. the first two don't count. The first games never happened. All right. Yes, they did happen. History has blown them away. They never happened. happened. Season starts from I never a said game that. three. Uh, the A's, I'm saying the because A's of the first two like games, that's the reason why. Because, because of the first two games, from three after on. the after shit was in the mud, you're grading it after that. I'm grading it because no, how they navigated no, through it all. Yeah, because they were put in that position. I can't talk about that bro. without without including the bro. first two, bro. <laughs> w w without the first two games. Bro, bro. that's bro. crazy. Bro, bro. Arsenal had a phenomenal first half season last year, then. Even yeah. though we lost the first yeah. three, oh, man. we had A plus. A, a plus Absolutely, for the season. sure. Absolutely. Our, if we did a mid season, our bottlers, though. <laughs> if we did a mid season, if we did a mid season, why not? Because again, if we're gonna recognize that they didn't finish bottom half after the first three games, a it has to be it has I to be consistent for them. I don't know, but what happened though? We didn't get Champions League, so what happened? Oh, typical Arsenal bottled it up. But know, nobody accounted for what you just said, though. Nobody said anything about that. Nobody brought that up. Mm. What do you mean nobody brought what up? What, what are you talking about right now? About Arsenal in the beginning of the, of the season last year. Oh, we we're going to get oh, relegated. I, I this, that, and the other. Okay. And then all of a sudden, what happens? We're in the Champions League. Oh, it's in their hands. Oh, they lost the Spurs. Oh, bottlers, classic Arsenal. But, no, but nobody was saying, oh, but they had they had a rough start to the season. And they, they picked it up. So good job for them. Nobody said that. Nobody's talking about that. They're talking about... The overall performances and overall performances for United have not been an A. That's as simple as that. If you want to praise Eric Ten Hag's work behind the scenes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, he deserves every ounce of credit. Uh, I'm glad. That. I'm glad that you said you're okay with B plus. I would give it a B plus, and I'm gonna give them that 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 little. I'm gonna curve the grade up to an A then because of what Ten Hag did. How about that? That way, that way, Eric doesn't get offended because he didn't get credit last season. It's about about this the, the 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 blatant bias right now. Of that. course, I'm biased. It's my it's like, team. I'm a fan of the team. I'm gonna be biased for my team. Why not? Uh, Why not? I mean, look, I I've given I've given Arsenal worse what you call in the past, and I've regretted it. So let him have it. Absolutely. And he'll maybe regret it at the end of the season. I, or, I could regret it. I could regret it. 
still give it like an A plus, even though they exactly the, the fact before. that we're talking about <laughs> mid season and and I think it's disingenuous to be like, oh, we're starting at match day three. No, it's because match day one and two happen. Everything pointed towards yeah. this season being way worse. Right there should be two like grades down. <laughs> okay, if it's two grades down, then I'm working my way back up. You, you shot right back up, of course. Absolutely, but, you know, I can back it up. That's what I said. D to C, you're in the D A. That's exactly what just happened right now. Uh, I, 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 by the way, I don't know who Capital Q is, but even the, he says that at best is B. At best is B. That's fine. I, that's not a bad grade, but. I'm talking about grades over here, but I'm just, I'm just, I got, I'll go ahead. I'm just, I'm done. 6.5, 6.5. Listen, man. I already said my, I already said my A. Yeah. Nick, Nick what about you? Yeah, I'm sticking with we'll my Keep a. moving. What, what moves you, Nick? All right, B, B plus. On there. On the verge. I think we already know what Eric feels. So uh, okay, I, I said, I said, he said B plus. plus. So. I said B plus. So like, that's um, fine. Can, can, can I can I change my grade after hearing these two? No. Please give no. Him, give no. Him an F, the average is drop a lot. No. I've, no. No way. B. I give him a B. I give him an F for their opinion. So I guess <laughs> average it out. D plus. C minus. Oh man. I, I knew that was coming. But I just didn't expect that to be like wholeheartedly sincere. No, I was just so. Yeah, yeah it is sincere. It is sincere. I listen. It's a mid-season review for the team that I follow, and I know that it could have been way worse. But you know it could have been way better. No, absolutely not. So you don't not. know that. Absolutely so wait, not. On. What was your prediction <laughs> last year for the for the Manchester United? Like, what was your prediction for them? They were, I think I put them in fourth. This year? I think I put them not in fourth. This year. No, no, you said last year. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This year. I meant for this year. Like, what your prediction last I put year them for this year? For when we did, when we started the, the pod for 20, for 22, 23, I put them in fourth place. Okay. Barely making it fourth place. Okay, okay. okay. Barely making oh, it. I yeah, I and I remember we had that conversation because Arsenal were looking good. City's obviously still there. And I even think I put freaking like Liverpool in, in the top I three. I think we all because did. Because that, that fall off was not seen. Nobody saw it. Here's the thing. If you want to talk about last season also, the fact that United weren't that great last season, and then we saw that Ronaldo wanted to leave, it's still part of the club. It's still part of that team. The manager is still part of the club, still part of that team. They have to function as a unit. So because I see the value in that function as a unit, I'll start with a B plus, but I'm going to give them the credit for an A because they've navigated that. They have five losses. Out of the top four, they have the most losses out of all of them, but they also have the least amount of draws. They've been able to come back and win games when they need to. By, by comparison, you have Newcastle that have nine draws because Nick Pope has saved their ass. If I'm going to give an A for that effort on 39 points, I better be giving an A for effort no, on No, no, that's points. completely different. Newcastle and United are completely different animals. Okay. Completely different. You but can't say here's the thing. Newcastle got an A, United have to get an A. That's because, that's, because that's apples and oranges. No, I don't think so. And that's you want to know why? No, you want to know why? Because I'm... Apples and in, in Dyer's shirt. No, Dyer's shirt is two <laughs> orange balls on his chest because that's that's the only thing that he can aspire to at the moment. So <laughs> what I'm saying right now <laughs> is that <laughs> the, the effort the effort, the effort, effort that, that Newcastle are putting forth, Jeez. I would I would on the same. And and I know maybe it, it stung to say A- minus for Arsenal, but I also believe that, again, it's midseason and it can go a lot better. Because United started off with two losses, which I think is bullshit that Marco tried to put, put me under that bus with his grandma and his mom, is that, <laughs> is that match day three, <laughs> match day three. My grandmother's mom deserves an A++. Absolutely. Absolutely. They do. But the thing is that the season didn't start match day three. It started match day one, and they took two serious L's, two freaking spankings. And the fact that they're right now tied... The effort for midseason is an A for me. I'm not saying that's how they're going to end. I'm not saying that the purple patch is going to continue. I'm also not saying that they're going to go world beaters and win all four competitions. Which they could do. Which they could do. And uh, that's the other thing. Like, I didn't even mention that because I knew that as soon as I would say that, I'd be like, oh, participation trophy, participation trophy. They haven't won anything, but they're still, they're still doing well. Why? Because they navigated that bullshit start of being bottom of the table after the first two games and then building their way back up. As well as, and I'm I'm building on it because he wants me to go from D to A. Here's D. You can take that D, and then I'll give you the C the C grade because they were able to come back from the two losses. The B grade because they didn't let Ronaldo bring them down after he's being a prima donna, and then the A grade because right now he's able to use the use that's available to him. I'm crying. Garnacho <laughs> and Pelistri and Elanga. It's so much where he doesn't even have room for Elanga to start on that team. 
Granted, there are performers that aren't doing well. Sancho and Anthony, the namely two. But on top of that, I feel like, especially because we haven't even gotten to, to, the, to the transfers, but with, with being able to pivot on, okay, we, obviously they weren't looking at workhorse. And I'm taking over because this is bullshit. <laughs> workhorse and Sabitzer are not going to be the top names on anybody's transfer list. But the fact that they saw a need and they needed to fill it because of injuries, that's also part of the club. Because not just the manager that's saying, Ten Hag can, can be like, all right, I'm going to get these two guys. You guys you're going to be okay with it. All right, fine. They're going to be okay with it because the team is together. And they're doing that effort, which to me is worth an A. I'll go from B plus to an A because Ten Hag is managing the, the club. He's managing that team. Oh, he's doing his job. He's doing awesome. He's he's doing awesome. he's doing a Ten better Hawk, job. Good job for managing the for doing your fucking role. Yes, for, do, for doing your Ten, role and spoil, not and not folding. Spoiler. Absolutely. Ten Hag is my impact signing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just surprised I'm, you gave it a higher rating than Arsenal. I did. I didn't. I did. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Look, like, Ten Hag is doing what a manager has never done before, which is manage the team. So. That's amazing. It's I just, I just, mind blowing stuff he's doing there. Yep. Congratulations. I mean, I just don't the trajectory, the trajectory we've been on, hell yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, hell yeah, it's amazing. I just don't see any reason why. Absolutely. As to why you would grade them higher than Arsenal. I, I, I don't understand it. A for effort, I boys. Really a for effort. A for effort. All right, you heard it here. Just the lack of respect, and that's that's what that's what bothers me. All right, impact, Diego. Impact signing. Impact so, yeah, signing. Uh, summer signs. Anthony, Martinez, Casimita, Malasia, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Malasia and Ericsson. I wish that was here for that part. Yeah, he's not. When he gets back, we did. Uh, uh, I'll give it to I'll, I'll give it to Casemiro. 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 Um. All right. So we'll save that question for Dyer when he gets back. And uh, just a quick grade on the team. We won't go over the impact signing just because just for the the sake of time. And Dyer's not here, so Tottenham. <laughs> so messed up. <laughs> Please. No, no, he deserves it because he's trying to shit on me. So you know what? You got anything? Okay. No, no, he got nothing. <laughs> uh, talk, bro. Yeah, bro. It has to be. They just. Uh, I didn't know that Pedro Porro was a, a sale from Man City. I didn't know that he was on Man City. I just saw oh, that right know. now when I was I looking at when I was looking at their their transfer ins and outs. They sold him to uh, to Sporting for I think like eight eight and a half mil. Man City to Sporting. Yeah, yeah Man City to Sporting, and then they just bought him. Uh, I don't know what the transfer fee was for though. What was the Pedro Porro transfer fee there? 25? Sorry? No, that was 40. Pedro Porro? 40? Get the... F I, think 40 40? I think 40 sounds right. Darren, that's, 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 that's his quick. obligation to buy. I think it was uh, 40 or 45. Darren, not to, not to, not to Man's backtrack got too least. much, but uh, summer impact signing for United. You have Anthony, Martinez, Casim Casimito, oh. Malasia, and Ericsson. Uh, hands down, Casimito. Hands down. And then uh, Tottenham Green. <laughs> Can I go back to the bathroom? <laughs> honestly, I mean their their stadium is right 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 upstairs. It's a toilet so, boy, right? Toilet boy, Jesus yeah. fucking Christ, man! I can't wait. Um, I have to give them like a the fact that they're still able to be in the top five. I'll have to give them a, a C minus. Wow, that's a maybe okay. a, a, may, an honest fan right there. That's an honest fan right there. Yeah, because they have nothing to aspire to. What else is he gonna do? Him, <laughs> <laughs> you can't even be like, oh, I hope. I'm an honest but man, okay. Unlike unlike A for effort. effort. This, this is this is this is years of being this is years of being reduced down to a nub, bro. Yeah. Based, I, I'll that. give him a C minus. I mean, I've explained it in every freaking podcast that you know I've been on that their first half performance is just fucking completely shambles. It's bollocks. It's uh, it pisses me off. Um, so no impact signing for you guys. What was that? No impact signing for you guys. <sighs> Who were our signings? Richarlison? Jesus <laughs> Christ. I mean, he's been injured most of most of the season. The only time that I actually see him seen him do something well was when he got his brace in the Champions League. Uh I forget against You tell me you tell me Parasich is gonna be your impact signing? Parasich? I, don't think it is. I mean, right, I, I, mean I would say as of right now, there isn't an imp, like a, a impact sign no, because you guys are probably, I think, worse off now than you were at this but point. But my point, is, hold on, hold on. my point is they didn't, they didn't what, do much. So, <laughs> so over was Charleston, was in Parasich. Wasn't Kulusevsky a final signing? I thought it was a loan, but yeah. Like, he it was a loan signed. that turned into a signing? Oh, he signed for you guys. I think so, right? I don't think he did. I don't remember. Or uh, No, it was Cuti Romero. With Romero. Uh, uh, Romero is probably your, your best signing. Overall, C minus. I, I really don't want to get in depth with it because I'm completely like I think we all it's, agree it's on really C, right? disappointing. Yeah, I mean, at least at least I'm an honest fan. 
Let's let's move on. Uh, grade Thank for you. Brighton. A grade for Brighton. Oh, you guys already went through this. How long was I in the bathroom? No, just no. Right. Brighton or Brighton or six. We literally just went from United, <laughs> Tottenham, Brighton, Brighton or six place. But you guys are not going to give a grade for. His we all agree. We, we all just, just agree. He just C- said C- we all agree. C-. We all agree. C- 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 oh, okay. okay. What do you What do you say? Today. Oh, good. <laughs> I would based on based on Diego's criteria. Uh huh. A, uh, hey, they're, right. they're consistent. They're consistent. Uh huh. They're consistently Shit. good at oh. second half. That's fair. second and half. That's where they've not gotten ties. Well, we'll, we'll see how the signings of um, Pedro Porro. We'll do. Yeah, I got fleeced on that, man. So and uh, hopefully fleeced. Conte gets uh, well soon as well. He's, yeah, he, he's, he's having a gallbladder. He just had a gallbladder surgery. So Not sure how stress. long he's gonna be gone for. So it's a stress oh. from the job, bro. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Uh, uh, right. Brighton, I'll give him a, a B plus. Okay, B plus. I mean, that's fair. They, they look strong team without Grand Potter. Still doing really well without Grand Potter. With all these, you know, players that they're that they're able to provide. You know, they have a World Cup winner player on their team, McAllister, who who also does really good. Casado does really good. I'll give him a B plus. All right. I'm giving Brighton an A. Have to. If you give you an A, you have to give Brighton an A. Uh, I have Especially to. Especially if they win. Because the they lost. I think it was four or five first team starters. Then they lost Potter. Then uh, the the Trossard saga, even though it was short lived because Kaiseido they told him to fuck off. Caicedo also, I feel bad for Caicedo, and I, I want to put a little bookmark on that because they were they were trying to clown this guy. I heard I heard other um, I heard other podcasts that were like, uh, what do he you say? He's like, oh, I, I'm gonna start saying that I got ten siblings, so I can like get a promotion at work or whatever. And it's like, man, I feel like that's, I feel like that's kind of left on, yeah. I feel like that's kind of lost in translation. The fact that he mentioned that he had a big family, and it was like, "Listen, I I have a need, and this is why I'm pursuing my move to a bigger club." And I think that they they were trying to. What I'm trying to say is they were trying to clown on Caicedo for saying that he wanted to provide for the people that are in his life, and it's like it's not about you know trying to chat about him having ten siblings. It's about like him saying like. I'm not doing this because I'm egotistical. I'm doing this because I'm actually thinking of the people behind me. Yeah. I feel like he he probably deserved to move. But as as far as them being basically uh where where they are, I, I it, it has to be an A. I'm a, I'm going to put it at that. I also think Deserbi was someone who wasn't expected much from and he definitely picked that up really easily. Yeah. So he has he has a lot of fluidity with uh with his team, so I think I think it's it's worth it's worth uh, giving them an A for the for their effort that they've had this season. Yeah, A. A as well. A as well. I agree. Uh, hold on. I just found this on the floor. A plus. Yeah, that was the team that I picked that day. I'm gonna. I'll, I'd have to give an A plus because I had a run of I I'll give them an A plus. I had them, and that's and that's me because I had them going down, not. They're fucking just so impressive. They got promoted this season, right? Yes. Correct. Yeah, they got promoted this season. Um, I didn't have them going down, but I definitely did not have them up there. Nobody did. Nobody did, bro. Nobody fucking did. I mean, the la- the last time Fulham was actually around this spot, I think, was when Clint Dempsey was there, and they actually made it to the Europa League final against uh, Sevilla. Atletico. I think. Atletico. Okay, it was Atletico. And I forget what year that was. 2010. But, but that 12, 12, 13 years, that's that's pretty good. Coming from the championship, yeah, man. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it an A. A plus. Just real, real quick, just to, just to backtrack a little impact signing for Brighton. For Brighton. Who were the signings? I don't even know who the source signings were. They signed, was it a Kaiseo? I'm going to say a How about Matoma. impact player? How about Matoma. impact, Matoma. impact Matoma. player? Uh, impact player. I'm going to say Matoma. What, did he sign in the summer? I have no idea. Then just I'm gonna just say impact player Mitoma. Uh yeah, I think I think he was a summer signing. Mitoma is stooping him too, right? Was uh wasn't he uh a signing? I don't think he was. Oh, last season. He, he replaced uh, what's it called Basuma. Mm-hmm. Who replaced Basuma? Casero. Stooping on. Oh, stooping on. Yeah. Yeah, stooping on coming to the summer signings. Levi Colwell, but he was on. He was like he's alone, and Pervis is stooping on from 
Fisher. Right? Yeah, I feel it has to be a stupid yen. I don't see Mitoma on here. Yeah, a stupid yen then. Yeah, it's stupid. Oh, yeah, right, but yeah, I think we all agree. A, A plus for Fulham then. Yeah, all right, honestly. Did yeah, they, yeah I they agree sign? with that. Uh, Pereira? Yeah, I don't care who they signed. You know who I'm Pereira? giving my, my impact Pereira. player. Per- Pereira. Mimitro, papa, Mimitro. They signed Pereira. I don't care, Mimitro. They can sign whoever they want. Pauline. Mimitro is the most impact player. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Pauline. Will I and? Oh, yeah, and Green. Yeah. Yeah. Their top signing is Leno. We want to Brentford <laughs> overall, Green. What are they, eighth? Eighth. Brentford, eighth. Eighth? I, no, I'll give them a B, a B, B plus. B plus, yeah. I'm doing B plus. Okay. Tony is doing pretty well uh, with them. For for me, my my criteria for both Fulham and Brentford are A's, specifically because it's mid season review. We don't even expect them to be in the top half, let alone the top like five, six, whatever. So, if anything, the players that are in the bottom half, the bottom four right now, such as like Everton and Southampton, I would have expected to see Fulham and Brentford in that spot. Tony has obviously been uh, crucial to them. And then Fulham's known as a yo-yo club. So yep. they go up and down, up and down. I feel like maybe they've banished that this season. So just to piggyback off of Fulham, I, they're both given A's for me. I second that. You guys good? Mm-hmm. Good with that? All right. Now we move on to uh, ninth place. <clears throat> Liverpool. <laughs> still in Champions League. So there's still some in the fight for. I guess Real Madrid, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's going to be an interesting one. Madrid aren't that strong either, so I think that's going to be a good matchup. Honestly speaking, uh, Nick, I'll start off with you, just because I want I want to see what you uh, how how you're viewing your club right now. Give him an A, please. <laughs> no, I probably, probably say an F to be honest. Jesus. Um, yeah, no players under the underperforming, manager underperforming. Um, question marks over the ownership. Um, sentimentality. Well, it, it, I feel like it just all literally just flipped from one season to the next. Like, you guys last season were, again, all four competitions you were in the fucking final. So, the last day of the league, every final of the, of the Domestic Cup's Champions League. And then every all of a sudden, they just switched. I mean, yeah, I, I couldn't tell you why over a two-month period since May to September. Or, sorry, uh, August. Um, why it flips like that. But, I mean, it's already been brewing. Was that the, the Bangkok Cup? Just change the thing. Haven't been yeah. the same since the Bangkok <laughs> Champions oh, Cup. Here you go. You know, need more, you know they need more credit where it's not due. But yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened in terms of flipping what happened in two months. But I mean, it's been brewing for a while, though. I guess, I, I'd probably say a lot of people probably expected Liverpool to downfall. To have a downfall eventually. If you were to say maybe a couple of years ago. Just the way they were going. Their model uh, isn't sustainable other than their current ownership. So yeah, I'd probably say F overall. Uh, just to backtrack, Q says Sporting was going to back out, so Spurs had to put up more bread. Forty-five, you went. For. That's what I'm saying. They, they got fleeced. It is Brighton gave him a B plus, balling, and with losing so many players like you mentioned before, and Saudi Marsh Mitoma just started playing a month ago, which is kind of crazy to think about actually. Mm-hmm. Well, hmm. Mitoma had to finish out his uh, university degree. Yeah, for real. On so Liverpool anyway. F. Anybody else? What do you guys have to say? On I that? agree with them. I had them finishing uh top two, man. I had them I think, top two. I think I had them fin- uh winning the league actually. Probably. Yeah, I did. It's the it's the seventh the seventh season curse. And I, I thought honestly that was a meme, but <laughs> it's it looks looking that way. It looks like and, yeah. and to and to it's Nick's credit to Nick's credit, we spoke about it here on this pod about Klopp's inability to adapt to degrading basically conditions at the club and his inability to reinforce certain areas because maybe it's not favoritism, but I'm going to use that word just because it's easier. His favoritism in players that he deploys in the midfield. The fact that, I, aside from WACPO, <laughs> there was no reinforcement in that mid, which is desperately needed. And then, of course, like I think you also saw by their standards, they, would, they shouldn't be near near even 10th place mm-hmm. as far as some of the players that they did lose and the players that they did have granted we haven't seen a lot we haven't seen jota we haven't seen Luis diaz even though nick doesn't rate him but greatest winner to play him. for liverpool but <laughs> <sighs> that's the thing like we, we, i'm glad that we all see that based off of what they had previously that they're not emulating it it's it has to be at least for me it, it's it's enough they yeah. they for it to fall apart that quickly i think it's an f and to sign a, a to sign a striker like darwin nunez and he has what the most missed chances in the premier league right now still probably i don't know 
I mean, him and him I, and Gakpo are the only two signings that you guys have. Most of, you guys uh, had to sign somebody else. Well, Fabio Carvalho and uh, Carvalho. Calvin Rams from Aberdeen. But, yeah. No. Well, uh, I mean, is there an impact signing? I mean, uh, probably not, yeah. Not, not, not right now. We'll see how the second half of the season kicks off. Let's see if uh, Darwin Nunez, if he starts putting those chances away, I'm, uh, there's, a, there's some trouble aboard. Just, uh, you know, man, in future. take him out and put Firmino in. Yeah, they're actually going to give him a new contract. Did they Wait. give Miller a new contract? Yeah. Or is that a joke? No, they did. To oh, Firmino? No, not recently. They gave him one less. Uh, to Firmino, right? To Firmino, right? Yeah, they gave it one to Anderson as well. Yeah, he's like, uh, it's funny as well because Klopp came out the other day. He says, and people think I'm loyal, but I'm not as loyal anymore. And he gives Firmino a new contract. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, I remember, I think I read something. Firmino said, "Why would I want to leave a club like like Liverpool?" Yeah, well, I mean, if I was like him, that. I wouldn't either. But yeah, if I'm the manager or the board. One, I would ship him, ship him out to China or Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> you gotta be ruthless, right? Yeah. Get ten hog. Oh, uh, let's go to Chelsea. <laughs> Doing his job. Chelsea. Uh, yeah, it, is, it is interesting because if you're considering, are you guys just factoring in everything or just on the pitch performances? I took it. I took the question as everything. I would say it's everything. Everything. Because then we wouldn't be considering the players that Brighton lost, yeah. the players that Liverpool haven't gained. Yeah. I think it's everything. And I, obviously, we, uh, in my opinion, we can kind of make a case to back that up with the performances that they've had on the pitch because yeah. of all of these outside factors that are part of the team. So that's how I saw it. Yeah. That's how it is. I say that's how we're all grading it for the most part. Yeah. yeah, I'd say C then C. C. For Chelsea? For Chelsea? Yeah. I mean, I'm just considering everything because I think if they weren't making these moves, I'd say an F as well. And I think from an F to a C. Well, is like a really wait, you mean job. these winter moves? Um... I would say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't I would say count, don't, don't count don't the count winter, winter moves. I'm yeah. talking about everything up until now, which is, I guess, I mean, I, now I, is it with a transfer window, but like, let's exclude that. Like those players that haven't was, set yeah, foot the, on yeah, the pitch this, for them yet. Yeah, exactly, so. exactly. It's got to be a D. Uh, I would I would put next. I, no, an I, NA, not applicable. No grade, no grade slow enough. And I give Chelsea an F or in 10th place. I think you can give more leisure to Chelsea, in my opinion, than Liverpool. How come? Why? They've had significantly more injuries, a new manager. And a new owner. A new owner. And their future looks a lot brighter than Liverpool, so. Yeah. I don't want to give them a D. I want to give them an F. I'm going to give them a D. I'm going to give them an F. Yeah. What is no, it? I'll give them a no. D as well. Is it pass or fail for Chelsea for me? So fail. Pass or fail. Yeah. Fail. Mm. Chelsea fan. I, I like the Chelsea fan is interesting right now. If I, if, I wish we had a chance. If, if you were, if you were a Chelsea fan, yeah, is that what you are about yeah, to say? <laughs> 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 but nah, like if, say, if I was Fernando, like I could care less about this season. To be oh, honest. I mean, after these signings, yeah. the crash, they, they well, don't, what, they, cup, what competitions are they still left in? Just Champions, just Champions League. League. And they don't even have any players in their prime, like compared to Liverpool. Like, you saw that they could only sign three three of the four that they just Yeah, played? they have to leave one of them out. We'll see. Um, but either but way. Compared have, to Liverpool, you were saying? Yeah, as they compared to Liverpool, like who, who they still have, you know, Salah, Allison, Van Dijk or whatever. Like there's still players, even if you consider them past their prime, they're still like really good players. But Chelsea don't they don't have to worry with the wastage of players in their peak peak years. Obviously, everyone is still so young. So yeah, I'll, if, if I was fan, I could care less about this season. It's only what four months till the end. So I mean, yeah, like I said, the future is bright with them, especially with the signs they made this transfer window. So I think I think uh, if we can all agree between a D and an F, I'm gonna say an F. But you say mm -hmm. D D D F for fail. F for fail. Like that. He I'm chose NA. I chose NA. Impact signing. Perfectly fine. Impact signing. Ah, right, well, look. Let, let's let's transition real Holy. quick into the winter transfer window now. Uh, the biggest signings if you, that you guys want to touch on real quick because we are running crazy amount of time right now. So, um, uh, best Chelsea signing. About me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even finish without laughing. Hey, uh, the cool, cool maybe? It's in the winter window. S and Sterling. No, I, Sterling. Honestly, I, I would just say just the fucking winter window because they signed. No, yeah, Sterling. Yeah, Sterling. They signed Fofana, Cucurella, Sterling, Kulivali, Aubameyang. That's all in the summer. Kulivali, I think, has two so, goals. We're factoring in winter. Yeah, we're factoring in winter now. We're transitioning into the winter transfer window now, too. Uh, I haven't seen enough impact by Mudrik, so I'm going to just stay with Sterling. That that whole, oh, he's recorded the fastest pace. In 10 minutes. I feel I feel like that's that, that's a bit of a smoke. Congratulations. Put Usain Bolt in there, and he's going to beat it by a long shot. Nah, man. Mudrik is the real deal. Bro. I haven't even seen it. I haven't seen him play a minute, but I'm going to just say I like rhythm. Really, really. 
really highly. I, I don't rate the Enzo hype. Yeah, I, I, don't I hope like, I hope this comes back to bite me. No, I I, I don't, don't rate Enzo. I, don't have, I, I think yeah, I, I actually I, I, I second you on that. I told I I to, Kyle I and I incredible. Kyle and I we talked about this last night about the Enzo signing. We agreed that we both compared him to Hamas. We think that he, like his highlight was the World Cup. He's gonna have like a you, good. You can't sort you of, can't get, compare a ten out of ten player <laughs> to someone that, that just came into the project, Josue. You can't compare a gem like Hamas. Okay, but okay, but to Enzo. Look, okay, how many? Okay, how many seasons? Mark will be the up. first to tell you. Up. I think Enzo's more talented. <laughs> it clicked. Enzo more more talented than Hamas. <laughs> I mean, I I it landed. <laughs> I equal them both. I don't think Enzo's gonna have such an impact with Chelsea. I I don't know. I don't all, think. All so. I can say is, before the World Cup, I never heard of Enzo Fernandez. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be for I, real too. I, I, I said in the chat, remember his name. He did. He did. He did. He I, did. Okay, one thing that I remember his name, and another thing saying, oh yeah, this player's gonna be somebody. I I don't well remember like that's I what never, people associate with. But that's 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 somebody. what I was talking about earlier. Like that that post that was uh not like because sometimes I know they show these stats um during the games during the Premier League games where they show the players rank in their club and it's like first 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 first. Of course it's within like that group of players. But the one that I saw for Enzo was within the Liga Primera in in, in Portugal. He's first for like things like progressive passes, interceptions, playmaking, all that other stuff. I don't remember off the top of my head. So apparently. Liga Portugal tax no, or no. I haven't no. seen them because I then I, I I would look dumb as hell because then also like that's where that's where Bruno came no, from. That, I don't think you can apply tax to that. League. So I don't think so, that, and I that's what's that, scary. That's a, new scout, that's a new like uh stopping ground for yeah. Like, yeah, that's a new scouting pool, dude. Yeah, Portugal. But I haven't seen enough of Enzo just to be honest. Yeah, the World Cup. I mean, again, Argentina, that great goal here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh but uh enzo as far as <laughs> him specifically i haven't seen enough of him i want to see how he transitions into the prem it's gonna be interesting but i'm gonna give it he's gonna get uh, beat up yeah. just, for me it'll be funny he got that box. dog in him he got that dog in him or no yeah he's, uh, he's argentine if it, you think so you got the dog in him bro you think so Mudrik? Uh, i'm gonna go with him so because i've yeah because he has I, no manners i've done yeah for i've done more <laughs> Racist mo- research into Mudrik than I've done in Enzo. So maybe if I looked at Enzo more, I'll probably change my opinion. But I'm gonna go with Mudrik right now. Yeah. Well, if, if, if Enzo flops, it's gonna be funny because I'm blaming Chelsea. Like, for me, there's no way a player like him should flop like his quality. So I swear, I thought Enzo was gonna stay at Benfica because after the whole transfer rumors of him moving out, uh, like just went to shambles. He had a game. He kissed the badge yeah. and he, he pointed down like I'm staying here. And what what happens? That's hilarious. <laughs> I'd like to say typical, but I'm gonna get run off this this uh, stream by all the non-Argentines that are following us or whatever because they they're gonna hate. But 22, I feel like he has the age to kind of pat it a little bit. Like if he's not good next season, he has a little bit more time to be like, all right, he's young. They're gonna want the but whatever, man. I, I feel if I put Pepe over the fucking coals, I'm definitely gonna do that for <laughs> Enzo. So Pepe, Enzo. I like um, too. So, all right, look, man, I don't. I'm really going crazy over time right now, so I kind of want to fast forward a bit. We're Let's gonna, do it. Do it. Anything from the winter transfer window? Do you guys want to touch on real quick that uh, kind of caught you guys off guard? It was the, a, just the, a crazy one. The three failed uh, document attempts by Chelsea. Yes. Yeah, for ZH. I for feel ZH. like that's oh, hilarious. How fucked up is that? It's pretty fucked I, up. I I just found. I said on on chat we were talking like I feel like they did it on purpose, but no, it's like. They Dude, fucked up purpose. and then and then uh, uh again. they fucked up again. And then again. And then and then the appeal, they didn't win it because it was like you guys still sent the wrong documents. Like on top of the fact you sent it the third time, it still wasn't because it was because it, it was apparently it was missing a signature or something <laughs> like that. So yeah, for real. <laughs> aren't they aren't they experts at the transfer market by now and they're still sending the wrong <laughs> shit? <laughs> Han Boley <laughs> brought his staff from the his baseball team over here to do the transfer. <laughs> there was a meme I was like they took the whole board and left the chef to do Ziyech's t- transfer. <laughs> for me, I'd probably say it's funny, Everton they received forty million for Anthony Gordon. <laughs> They spent a total of zero of it. That's another good one. Did you see the images for that? Yeah. They, went up, they went up to the grounds with a freaking uh, banner with uh, the boards, like, faces on them. It was, like, traitors and, like, all caps. Because, again, who, I don't know the name, but the, the Everton president said, judge us after the transfer window. And that was... That was, that was and that was selling Anthony Gordon. That's <laughs> it. It, it, it. They literally couldn't even get like they couldn't get anyone. It, Judges I afterwards. Like a can Rabio. we get worse? <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> I couldn't even get like a rabbit. Relocation. Spurs did them dirty though. So huh? Spurs did them dirty. So oh yes, they weren't for that. I forgot Danjuma. Oh, yeah, yeah. yo, for real. Danjuma. That was nuts. 
man was already. Oh, that's right. You guys like signed Jay-Z. But he's, a, but he's not a signing. He's alone. So, look, he's now alone. we can officially say, I don't want to see a picture of the player holding the jersey. I want to see a, I'm waiting until the player <laughs> yeah, on the fucking We can't even field. trust that anymore. We have to wait. Yeah, he, has um, to, he has to be in the team yeah, sheet, yeah, whether yeah. it's in the starting 11 or on the bench. No, I don't give a fuck. Yo, my man is really like, I can't wait to prove to Everton and help them through this fight <laughs> on a plane to freaking Spurs the next day. <laughs> Yo. Nabba uh, Fakir was on, the same thing. Shit. Yeah, for real. No, he was, he was on a plane, reali- then got the text from Spurs. Hey, yo, pilot, change the route. Yo, go to London. <laughs> just go a little left. <laughs> go, <laughs> go to London. Did you do that last time? Mal- was it Malcolm for Barcelona? No. Somebody did that. Re- someone that... I that was think, literally changed. I think it was Malcolm. I want to look that up. I think it was Malcolm. I think it was Malcolm. We were going to... Juve? I want to say Drew or Roma or something. Roma. Roma. I think it was Roma. Roma. I think he he went from like, there to, straight to Barcelona. Yeah, straight to Barcelona. Yeah, like, oh, Malcolm? Yeah, I yeah. think it was him. It was him. And look where he is now. You turn in the midair. Yeah. Look where he is now. He's at uh, he's at Zenit. <laughs> did a did a three Ma- point three Malcolm's, point turn in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm's agent says Barcelona transfer was revenge on Roma. So yeah, wow. that was Damn. it. Wow. All right, so it's I, the agents to blame. It's the yeah. agents to blame. Telling you, agents. There's actually there's actually a team that's interested in Malcolm. I forgot which one. Anyway, so any. Al Nassar. Oh. Al Nassar. Any other winter transfers that kind of caught you guys off guard? Jorginho for me, 100%. I'll say that. I was very surprised by that. Coming I was guard. surprised by I that, too. I can't judge that transfer because I just... I'm mixed about yeah, that transfer. I, I just had, like... I want to shit on Jorginho so bad because... But yeah, Jorginho the, the one thing you that guys, had me... You guys needed the hop, skip, and a jump. <laughs> you, yo, I can't wait for that. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll can't wait. Yeah, probably. Yes, he will. There's no... What? Saka. Saka. You think, you think you so? Think Saka's better than Piquet Sagan and Jorginho? I don't know if he's better, but... Uh, like, who would you trust more? One, so he's gonna take it. But here's right the now, thing. Saka, You've yeah. all, but you all, you guys have obviously read that apparently Arteta highly Arteta rates Jorginho more. because he sees how he fits into his project. Yeah. Why would you not give someone like that the penalties? Yeah, like, well, I, I, think pen, I don't think we rely on the penalties. I think it's just he's just more there just to help us control the games now because... And look, I, I was not happy uh, about the guard uh, yelling at party? You guys saw that too. No. Lokanga. No, oh, Lokanga. Lokanga. And oh, Lokanga sorry, sorry, got sorry. loaned he out. He got loaned out too, apparently. Palace. Very much needed, in my opinion. But I just know he was yelling at the DM spot, so I assumed it was party, but I only saw the gift. Yeah, he, he was uh, taking out uh, the party for an mm-hmm. injury. Thank God he's fine, though. He's good. But, um, um, yeah. Jorginho, I was, I saw this. I was not happy about it. I'll be honest. I was like, what the fuck are we doing? Come on. William, David Luiz. We, we've been down this road before. Yeah, this is a little fun. <laughs> <It's not laughs> <doing anymore. laughs> I I have no reason not to trust what Arteta's doing right now, so I'm gonna back him on this. Sure, and sure. As long as as far as the stats go, Jorginho actually does fit the six role more than Party does. So I'd be interested to see Jorginho in the six, Party in the eight next to Odegaard, because I think he's a lot more attacking than Shaka is. So I'm 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 interested to see how this is gonna line up. Okay. My only fear with Jorginho, and this is my biggest fear with him right now, just given how much pace there is all over the pitch nowadays. Yeah, I saw that with too. <laughs> him running yeah. behind the ref, and the yeah. ref overtakes him. That's what scares me. <laughs> but what gives the TP confidence is that we have runners all around him. Sure. So if it was, if it was him and fucking Mustafi and Rob <laughs> Holding, oh, shit, yeah, we're fucking getting relegated tomorrow. But the fact that we have solid defender, pair, or solid, solid center back pairing, solid uh backs and then a midfield that's already kind of it's already in unison if he if his iq is what it, it was what we're expecting it to be like cucurella said who's the smartest player in the justice squad yeah he should have Jorginho. he should just slot right in and hopefully even help us break down those low blocks even more yeah and future. to back up your point in terms of having runners around him um and in chelsea champions league run he had and Golo Kante, who was past his prime, but that Champions League run, he's probably the best midfielder that, that season. And Jorginho was fine. He obviously question marks over winning UA for player of the year, but he was still incredible for Chelsea. And he had, you know, Angola Kante, one of the best, you know, box to boxes of all time. So that just backs up your point in terms of having runners around him. So, yeah. I'm J- so nervous, though. Jamie, Jamie Carragher, he said that Jorginho is not a great signing, but he's also not a bad signing because um, Arsenal has been playing like quick football. Like, you know, attack, attack, like, and great defense, of course. Um, but their playing style is, has been fast paced. Jorginho, he, he said that Jorginho is pretty much there for like maybe the last eight to 10 games of the season to try to control mm-hmm. and, you know, settle things a little bit, make, make things a little bit slower, uh, just so, you know, I Arsenal see, can relax. I see what you're saying. I, 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 I see what he, his point is, but I sort of, I think we attack in waves. Come out off the blocks hard, 
slow it down. Come out again, slow it down. Second half starts, come out the blocks hard, slow it down, mm -hmm. and go again. So I think Jorginho is going to be, for those moments, just really we're going to be controlling the ball, just pressing the fuck out of the position, and just looking for those those passes in between the lines over the top. So I, I'm, I'm trying to look at the positive right now because I'm still, again, I'm very mixed about this signing. It's fucking Chelsea, and do, I hate Chelsea. Do you think he'll start over any of the players? Oh, Shaka. no. Hell no. I, I'd be surprised if he does. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised anymore. Huh? Start he probably will start Europa League. He probably will start Europa League. I don't know. I'm curious, man. I'm really fucking curious because this... That's actually pretty smart because in that way, he can reserve players like Shaka and Party mm -hmm. if he decides to interchange just specifically for the league. And I'm sure you guys haven't seen the interview with Sorgino himself, but he, no. they, were, they even asked him, like... He's like, no. <laughs> uh, they even asked him, like... Oh, uh, how'd you feel about coming here? Like, is this something that you want? He's like, well, I know what that wanted me before. Mm, and it wasn't because of my choice that didn't come. Yeah, that, that photo of him after that game. I yeah. forget what game it was, but so I could see that. He confirmed that okay. Arteta has gone for him back when he was in Man City. And it wasn't because of Jorginho's choices. It's just Chelsea that he didn't go over. So, yeah, they're, City were close to signing him. Chelsea, Napoli. the root of all evil. Very That's close. what this proves. That's what this proves. Look, if, if we go on to win the league because of this guy, Chelsea. That's crazy. Thank you. You get, you would hell yeah. Fucking sign Murdick all you want. <laughs> give us, a, give us a Premier League trophy. I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, any other signings that has captured you guys' uh, attention? No, I, I like we're just. I know we focus mo mo primarily on Premier League. I'm trying to get my words out, but as far as world football, there wasn't really much else happening, was there? I mean, besides Chelsea sending the half the half the world already, but <laughs> Chelsea and, actually and Nottingham Forest signing and the other and half Nottingham, Forest. Nottingham Forest, Forest signing the other half of the world. Twenty nine. They've 29. they've signed more, but we're giving Chelsea more shit. Eh? I think it's, Chelsea was ranked that's third. How the world should be. I think Chelsea was ranked third of buying players behind League One, and I think it was the City. Navas, out. Navas to Forest. That's a, that was a surprising one. Mm, oh yeah, I'm, Navas I'm, I'm to I'm high for Navas. I feel like yeah. he's 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 done his. Henderson, done Henderson. everything he's got to do. Henderson, Henderson, is <laughs> Henderson, is Henderson is fucked. But it's Henderson only, no, it's, fucked. it's only a loan deal though. <laughs> Henderson's injured. I know, but, but when he comes back, he's still fucked. Yeah, he's still fucked. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's move on to the predictions for the weekend, real quick, and then uh, look, we got we're, we're at a crazy amount of time right now. Really, so. that's crazy. Mm -hmm. We're pushing too. Let's go. I thought, I thought only thirty minutes passed. Versus Fulham, Dar. <laughs> Chelsea versus Fulham. Oh. That's a good game. 2 1, Chelsea. Wow, that quick? Will Enzo Damn. get his minutes? I think he will. That's the, that's I think he'll come in as a sub after the 65th minute. The I'm going to go 2 1 as well. No, I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm going to go 2 1 as well. Mudrik is on the, on the score sheet. 2 1, Fulham. They're, they're at Stanford Bridge, right? Correct. Yeah. I'm going to go. Is, is Mitro fit? I don't mm, know. Maybe. I mean, I'm going to go 2 1, Chelsea. Yeah, I think I think it's two one Chelsea. Also, I I don't want him to win, but I think it's two one. Marco, <clears throat> Chelsea versus Fulham on Friday. Chelsea, who's at home? Shit, Chelsea. Chelsea. He's, he's, uh, he's drunk. Guys. He's drunk. <laughs> bro. <laughs> um. Oh. Two two. Two two. Two two. <laughs> the other game we have next is Nottingham Forest versus Leeds. So. Eric said Leeds 3-1. Uh, wait, who did you say first? Nottingham Forest versus so Leeds. So they're at Forest. I'm going to say 1-1 uh, one, one all. All right. Anyone else? 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two yeah, I agree. 2-2. Two, two. I, I feel like it's going to be a goal fest. Marco? Uh, uh, Nottingham Forest is at home, right? Yes. Correct. One two, leads. All right, I'm gonna go with two two. By the way, Mankini, was it Salon deal right? Salon deal Mankini, with option right. to buy. Oh, I th actually no, I think it's obligation to buy, because I remember seeing that the price was uh was stated. So yeah, Mckinney loan. It's right. gonna be nice. It's yeah, a loan. Two two, two. and then price. up next, everyone uh, says City's Achilles heel. Yep, Tottenham at home versus Man City. Dire. Woo. Uh I think it's gonna be a close one like every other Man City Spurs match. Uh I'ma say three two Spurs. Three two three two Spurs. Spurs. Now this is not me. Second half win? I think yeah, second half win. I think Man City is gonna go into the half leading one no. And then second half is just gonna be a fucking goal fest and Spurs ends it three two. 
All right. I'm going to actually go with a very squeaky bum time 2-1 city one. Oh. Yeah, I agree with that. 2-1 city. Perry Kane fan my ass. I also think 2-1 city. <laughs> I don't. I don't think they have the they have the personnel to to overtake. We also got to remember. I mean, the, I highly doubt Conte is going to be there. Well, Conte is not going to be there. But I mean, we've seen it with past managers. You know, taking on big teams and actually winning the game. So, Marco. Marco. Two two. two really? Two. Nah, man. They were up two nil, and they. Mira, 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 mira. At this point, it's wishful thinking. All right. I already stats. Put it down. You know what I do with stats. I already you put know it down. what I do with stats. <laughs> I already put it down. So two two. Ooh. Spurs, Spurs Man City. City. At at Spurs. At Spurs, I mean, ooh, this would be a game where the players kind of want to show for show for Conte, you know, not not being there and shit. <sighs> so, just to kind of debate Diego's point of five point gap, I'm gonna go Spurs. Two one. I love you. I said three two. They all chose Man City. Right. Marco said a draw. That concludes our game week, whatever predictions. I don't know. Game week twenty two. Thank you. Yeah. Game week twenty two predictions. Yes, we got game week twenty three. I believe is our last week for our current uh, for the current cycle cycle for that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Gat's keeping track because he wants that belt back. That's all. I'm keeping track for the benefit of the pod and the viewers. <laughs> yeah, right for yourself. I don't know where I'm at in the. Standings. I'm already waiting until the end of the season. Hey guys, look, he's on first place. Oh, okay, here we go. Uh, I mean, right. in all fairness, Eric probably should have won the first one. So, but I mean, there's some, there's some shoddy record keeping going around. So, <laughs> Eric, you should look <laughs> over. Real quick. over here. You should look over. <laughs> look over. Make sure all the scores are right. Uh, all right. So look, that's all we got for anything prep. Well, not for me later. Sorry. But as far as, uh, I guess, the competitions go. So I'm going to hand this over to Diego and Gap so they can end it with the Fantasy 15. What's up? What's up, Dyer? You okay, Dyer? Dyer's, Dyer's loving the apple juice over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, some, it's some good apple juice as well. All right, you're trying to, you're trying to truncate this a little bit? Let's do it. Okay, I have, uh, all I have is a watch list update. I'll do that. I got the player prices. And then I'll hit it with some team stats as far as that. And then I know you have also, um, Gat and I have prepared some some notes, which Gat was very kind to um, put in one place. So that way we can guide you guys through the double game week 22 in fantasy. This is usually the moment where the rest of the bench gets into their phone so they could check their teams that they haven't <laughs> checked for the last uh, two weeks. And so, but... that, and so that they can further whatever <laughs> is going on against me and they can start trading oh, yeah, players. Oh, so The conspiracy, so that the they agenda. Can start trading players back the and forth. The agenda against stuff. Gat. The agenda that, against <laughs> Gat that's been, uh, that's been said. So r- really quickly, Double Gimmick 22, just to let you guys know, some of the fixtures that we have coming up essentially is Leeds and United play twice. In the same week. So United has two home games against Palace and Leeds. Leeds play away to Forest and away to United, which is the same fixture. That being said, loading up on United players is going to be something that we're going to mention quite a few times on this on this part of the podcast. And maybe if you want to pick up a Leeds player or two just to bolster and get the benefit of them oh. playing twice. Oh, I know. It's going to be great. So the watch list update. Typically, we give you a full watch list at a certain point so you could keep track with us and then afterwards we give you some names that we're putting on and some names that we're taking off talking about united playing twice bruno fernandez and licha lisandro martinez are two of the main picks with rashford being one of the most common players in most players teams and most managers teams bruno has a very high ceiling in terms of the potential for points this double game week he's been assisting involved and then today specifically he was also part of the play in getting um the the assist to the assist, if I'm not mistaken, sending it over to Rashford. It's a Rashford beautiful outside it foot pass. Rashford uh, basically um, handing it over to uh, Fred uh, to tuck it in. Some of the other names that I'm putting on there: Nathan Ake, Enrico Lewis, with the departure of Cancelo, who makes part of our watch list off uh, side of the list. Nathan Ake and Rico Lewis are going to see a lot more minutes on this city defensive side. Now, they haven't been very good at keeping clean sheets, but as far as whenever they are involved, as we saw with that FA Cup game, uh, Nathan Ake can pretty much put it away if he has to. So Rico Lewis is also another popular pick because he is 3.9, very cheap, a serious enabler. 
He does take up a city slot, so you can only have three city players on your team. Most of those are already taken by KDB and Holland. Another few names on this, and I think one of the most important ones are going to be Odegaard and Enketia to add onto the list to make sure that you're watching them, especially for game week 23. It looks like Martinelli is still part of the attack, but a lot of it is flowing through Odegaard through the middle. And Ketia has also been stepping up while Jesus is absent. There was a photo today of Jesus with his boots on on the grass. So that, that clock could be ticking. If you want to get Enketia into your squad, you should do so. I think doing it now is a great time to do it. They play Everton, if I'm not mistaken. And against a, a weakened Everton side who just lost their manager, we are going to see maybe a, a bit of a new manager bounce, which could make it difficult for Arsenal. But I think that they have the quality in them. And just to, just to piggyback on and get there real quick, I don't want to cut you off for too long. Do one, it. one of the two popular picks for this upcoming game week is to downgrade from Mitro to either Nanto or the aforementioned Enkedia. So Enkedia, that's right. jump on them now if you want to. So uh, some other names to round out the list. We have Nyonto and Rodrigo. The fact that Leeds are playing twice on this double game week 22, they may not necessarily get on the score sheet as far as both games, but they're playing twice and you might as well take two shots at getting some points with one player off very easily and very clearly matt doherty who decided that atletico madrid he loves watching them play based on a tweet that he sent out in 2016 he is now at atletico and out of the league Cancelo, which we also mentioned assisting today with Bayern München and uh konate out with injury it looks like long term so as far as Liverpool defensive assets, I believe we said the last time we made a Fantasy 15 update to avoid them completely. But just to let you guys know, he is someone that you should probably avoid. As far as some new players, I'll go over some prices. Goalkeeper Keylor Navas, who is a 4.5 at Nottingham Forest. He might be a good option for a budget goalkeeper. Pedro Porro at Spurs, 5 million coming in as a defender. I don't know how he'll go, but Sutar at Leicester with 4.5. It could also be a cheap defender to put in there. Although with names like Rico Lewis, Patterson maybe. Patterson could be making a good comeback. I also saw that as well under Sean Dyche. But depending if he's fit or not. As far as the mids, um, we haven't spoken about Sabitzer because obviously he hasn't featured yet. But he's already added to the game as, as a 5 million uh, rated midfielder. And up front we have... Uh, Onuachu for Southampton, 5.5. And I remember looking at a specific stat that this guy is like six foot seven or something like that. He's, an, he's enormous as far as oh, what his uh, potential could be as far as a striker, which they're desperately missing. Some team stats, which I have here, uh, which I found online that were already compiled for the last five game weeks. So basically from game week 17 to, the, to game week 21, basically the restart after World Cup. Goal scored. Brighton lead the league with 14 goals, City in, with 13, and United and Arsenal both with 12, rounding out the top three. As far as XG, City, Arsenal, and United make up those top teams with 14, 11, and 10, respectively, as far as XG. Shots on target, United just inching forward uh, in that first spot with 31 shots on target, Brighton, City, and Spurs. Essentially, for the defense, goals conceded. Newcastle have conceded zero goals in the last five game weeks, which is incredible value for the defensive assets. You're going to want to pick up on them. And essentially, they lead the table as far as all the defensive stats. XG conceded, shots conceded on target, and big chances conceded. Newcastle are the most solid. City look to be making a comeback as far as their defensive numbers. And Brentford is also up there for their defensive assets. So that's what I got for now. And Gat, I'm going to pull you in to give us some notes and some other uh, tips to navigate this next game week in fantasy. Awesome. So just some things that you want to keep an eye on, not necessarily something you want to do right away, other than the first one, which is your Cancelo conundrum. Apparently, he is still 33% owned in fantasy, myself being one of them, unfortunately. So <laughs> I have to make a decision pretty quickly, but some good replacements. Um, some of them have already been mentioned, the likes of Ake, uh, Botman, as Diego just read out, five clean sheets uh, for Newcastle right off the rip. So he is definitely going to be a very good option. Zinchenko, we spoke about him a lot earlier as well. Another decent option. And Estupinan as well. Brighton are leading in those attacking stats, and he is also 
uh, doing the work to help in some of those. He is on the board with some of the assists as well. Um, we do have a double game week coming up this week and next week as well. So the first one is the mainly the Manchester United uh, double home in both fixtures to Palace and to Leeds. Uh, a lot of people are most likely going to triple up on United given their current form. Those three are most likely going to be Bruno, Luke Shaw, and Rashford. Uh, one thing to do no to note on both Newcastle and United, since they both made it to the final of the Carabao Cup, that is a confirmed blank game week for them in game week 25. Uh, I believe Brighton and Newcastle were set to play, so now both of those teams are not going to play, and we were set to play Brentford. So... Uh, those four teams are going to be out for Game Week 25. So you want to just keep that in mind. You want to try to save as much transfers as possible uh, because it's still too early to talk chip strategy. Uh, maybe we'll have something for you guys next week once we get a little bit more information on how things will fall. Uh, but try to save your transfers as much as you can so you can navigate through all of these blanks. Uh, City and Arsenal also are going to double soon. Arsenal do have two home fixtures as well in Game Week 23. Yep. Uh, even though one of them is against City, you can't go wrong when it's a home fixture so we'll see how that goes but uh, on the city side some of the players that you're going to want to double or triple up on Mares, Rico Lewis, Ake, KDB and of course everyone already has Holland. Uh, on the Arsenal side you got a little bit more options depending on how your team structure is. Uh, Martinelli, uh, you can go Ben White, Zinchenko, Enketia, Saka and Odegaard. Those last three are probably going to be the favorites uh, to keep going forward in your triple up but again keep in mind there are blanks coming up there's still a lot of fixtures to be rescheduled so again save your transfers as much as possible just so that you can navigate everything a lot easier uh, and then I see Diego over here pulling up some uh some updates here on our draft yes uh the draft league just to round it out you're all good with tips gat and uh the placings I took an L Unfortunately, to Nico, who hasn't been managing his squad for the last five months. I don't need to. I have Holland. And that was, uh, he literally. That was Holland hat trick, though. Yeah. <laughs> he li the literally Holland hat trick helped him. I lost by four points. Uh, as far as the other matchups, Eric had beaten out Marco 58 to 28, and Gat had beaten out Josue 47 to 28. As far as the standings, God Gat damn. first, Diego second, Nick third. Eric moves up to fourth, Marco goes down to fifth, and Jose rounds out our top six for the draft league. How far back am I? You are, uh, since this is three points for its standard uh, league, um, you are sixth with 20 points. I'm, I'm not going to say who, but somebody here and was Marco, asking to hijack everybody's players. That was me. Josue, was six with, Josue is six with 20 points. Marco is fifth with 25 points, so a five-point gap. A couple of weeks ago. Nothing. A couple of weeks ago, before I left to Florida, I mentioned to Eric, uh, and I think to Nick too, yo, let me buy your, let me, let me take your players that way we could sabotage and not let Gat win the fucking league because we all know how much of a troll Gat can be when he wins something. Pick, well, and what did I say? You coming, said no. Coming from the troll. Well, why did I say that? Because you have his back. Oh, thank you. Because uh, somebody here was trying to say something otherwise, and that uh, I was uh, trying, I, I was agreeing with you or something like that. Who said that? I don't know. I don't know either. It sounds like someone that would throw you under the bus. Just like he threw his grandma and mama. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing he doesn't have a mic because nobody can hear what he's saying right now. So, uh, so, <laughs> so I'm just going to say this in public. Uh, Eric, you Nick, sure? can, I, can I have your players? Wow. Are you still going to be that blatant? That's crazy. I am. All right. Well, look, that was a long enough episode. Halfway checkpoint. Winter transfer window. Second half of the season kicking off. Fantasy 15. You had it all here. Hope you enjoyed it. We will be back next week. As always, we are the Bench Roamers. The Bench of the Boys. Peace, everybody. Good night.